Thank you very much. Are we live streaming? All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. This is our regular meeting of uh, council uh, for February 14th, 2017. I wish you all a, a happy Valentine's Day. Uh, we, uh, we do have uh, at the top of all of our agendas an acknowledgement of First Nations lands and since it's, this is still uh, something that we just got going on with about a month or two ago, I think I'll read it out again. We acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Coast and uh, Strait Salish peoples. Specifically, we recognize the Lekwungen speaking people known today as the Songhees and Esquimalt nations. 
and that their historic connections to these lands continue to this day. I should also let you know that I'm sure some of you will wish to speak uh, tonight that we are live streaming, and so anyone at the microphone uh, will be uh, on video and they're archived, uh, probably about two, three rows back uh, for those of you who uh, are in those rows. Uh, so uh, with that, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, we have an agenda. We've had some additions to it. Uh, Ms. Jones, do you think we need to uh, uh, pass the revised agenda? Because there's no changes. There's just additional material. So we're okay with that. Uh, we have a number of items. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, minutes uh, and reports. In particular, we have one for council, January 23rd. If I can move, have a mover and seconder. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, Councilor Zelka, um, I understand you have something that you wanted to address in terms of what happened at that meeting. I do, Chair. Thank you very much. And um, I uh, ask for a moment's forbearance uh, from council colleagues as I wish to uh, provide an apology related to the meeting. Um, if I can pull up the uh, agenda for a second here. Sorry, I'm just catching up to you. Anyways, the context uh, of my um, apology has to do with section eight of the minutes. Um, so I just wanted to provide the context. The context is section eight of the minutes where uh, 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 an expre um, uh, a phrase was given um, uh, as part of uh, section eight around relating to the council strategic priorities where uh, the phrase um, 800 illegal secondary suites was um, uh, presented to council. And um, in the course of that, um, I thought I was making a joke. Uh, I made reference, unfortunately, in the sentence that followed, I included <coughs> Oak Bay News, CNN, and fake news. And uh, that was a no-no. Um, what I wanted to uh, say first off is uh, my sincere thanks to a staff and uh, thanks to uh, the reporters for helping me do a bit of research to find out um, what the actual uh, number is. And, um, <coughs> and, uh, and I I'm sorry, I just, I'm, I, this is not easy for me. Um, related to section number eight, there was, um, a, 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 I've, I've always had a desire to, to base uh, any policy decisions based on facts. And facts are very, very important to me. So I want to thank staff for being able to help me trace through the many reports all the way back to the BC assessments data that provides the actual number of suites that exist here in Oak Bay. And um, uh, the 2010 report makes reference, uh, the only staff report I could find that anyone could find, uh, Oak Bay staff has been very, very careful Many hundreds of secondary suites is what staff has told council is what exists. They base that statement, you'll notice the lack of a word illegal. They base that statement on the BC assessments data. And the BC assessments data, when I count them up, um, uh, there are 475 buildings that have the capability of having a suite not necessarily a secondary suite as we define it, not necessarily occupied, and certainly not any sense of illegal. So I really want to say thank you to staff for helping me actually to trace back to what the actual number is. We have 475 buildings that have a suite. So with that um, uh, fact that took me a, a week to, to, to trace through to find, uh, what I wanted to say is that um, I unreservedly apologize for casting any aspersions on Oak Bay News or on the reporting as any possible source of fake news. This was certainly not my intent and I now realize my attempt at humor went horribly wrong. I will follow this up with a letter to the editor repeating these words and also probably if they're willing to uh, print my research, I'll follow that as well. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, for your, uh, and you. Council for your forbearance. And um, I certainly uh, hope we can all, in the future, make sure that facts are distributed across Canada sure. and not otherwise. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, just for, for my part, I, I, I took it as humorous. Uh, I didn't take it as any uh, malevolent or, uh, uh, or other kind of intent. I, I, saw, I saw the humor in it, and I see it as that, and I accept it as that. Uh, any other discussions on the minutes? Seeing none, call a question. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. We go on to item number two, and these are uh, Mayor's remarks. Uh, just, I, I should have noted when we started the meeting, we do have uh, uh, two councillors uh, away today. They're, uh, um, they're out of the country, <laughs> both of them, and they, they send their regrets. Uh, the next thing uh, I want to do before I get into my remarks is uh, something that uh, was a, an absolutely wonderful, artistic, and, and uh, historic uh, uh, moment at CRD recently. <laughs> Uh, the CRD celebrated its 50th uh, anniversary, the Capital Regional District, and in order to celebrate that, uh, each community was asked uh, to uh, put a piece of a quilt together, uh, and that's representative of our community. And then that quilt, those pieces of quilts, were made into a large quilt, which is on display. So there's a, uh, a piece of that wonderful quilt on each, uh, you know, representing each of those communities that are constituents of the CRD. And as part of that, there was actually a, a second piece uh, for each of the communities, which now has been uh, given to our community. And it is my pleasure, and uh, two things, to recognize the quilter Linda Carswell Bland, uh, who's here with us today, former resident of Oak Bay, who's captured absolutely wonderful, the essence of our village. Uh, and uh, in a beautiful piece, someone actually, I think someone walked by it and thought it was a photograph. It was so wonderful. But it is actually put together uh, as, a, as a quilt. So uh, it is my uh, pleasure to not only recognize your wonderful efforts, uh, Ms. Carswell Bland, but uh, also the 50th anniversary and present this to, um, to council, to our community on behalf of the CRD. As you know, I'm the representative there. So if that can be held up nice and high for the people at the back, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We, oft, we often take photographs in, uh, in chambers to uh, commemorate these kinds of wonderful occasions. So uh, permit us to, uh, to take some photographs and uh, tweet them maybe, although the master tweeter, uh, Ms. Uh, Kirby, is away. You can you can take this too. I can just sit one. Just stand here, okay? And then All right. Just stand on one side. Okay. Hold there it. we go. There we go. Be hung in a, a special uh, place in, yes. the, uh, in the uh, municipal library. What well, thank wonderful you. Thank, thank you. you. I enjoyed doing it. And it. We'll leave it on display just outside uh, so people can walk by and have a look on their video. So you don't mind if we go and celebrate now? No, <laughs> no that's oh, fine. Okay. <laughs> thank you. You don't want to stay for a priority session? That's okay. <laughs> I think a pint might be nice. <laughs> Thank you. Right. <laughs> thank you. You can always watch the video. Yeah, I thank you. Thank you. Uh, now for my remarks. Um, my first remark relates to the terrible tragedy in Quebec City. This is the first time that we've, uh, we've met since then, uh, since that occurrence. Uh, I put out a statement uh, shortly after, on the, uh, I think the following Monday or Tuesday. It's on our website, uh, but I think it's important that uh, I read it uh, uh, into the record, so to speak, but also uh, to uh, actually put our position as to what happened uh, on the... Uh, before the public, and this was the statement. 
Sunday's fatal shooting in a mosque in Quebec City was a senseless act of horrific violence perpetrated on innocents gathered in a sacred place of worship. We join with our citizens to mourn those who lost their lives, to pray for those who are injured, and to grieve with the families affected by this terrible event. Diversity and multiculturalism are amongst our country's greatest strengths. While our sense of civility and humanity has been shaken, this heinous act must not be a threat to our open and free democratic society. We stand strong against all acts of intolerance and we are united in our humble offering of condolences to all affected. Signed, Nils Jensen, Mayor. Following that is just somewhat coincidentally, but uh, I think uh, appropriately, I attended a number of uh, diversity gatherings uh, and proudly represented Oak Bay. Uh, one was a, uh, the Black History Month being held at the high school at the Dave Dunnett uh, Community Theater, uh, which is celebrating all month. Uh, and uh, I was honored to be, to be asked to bring the words of welcome uh, uh, to the uh, Black History Month celebration uh, on behalf of our community. I also was invited, again, uh, an illustration of the wonderful diversity we have in our community to a Chinese New Year celebration in Victoria. And as part of uh, my welcome wagon duties, going to all new, uh, new owners, I, I, um, again, coincidentally, I visited a, uh, and, and celebrated Chinese New Year again with a family who had recently become permanent residents. Uh, and uh, it was absolutely wonderful to see the neighbors gather uh, openly and, and warmly welcome uh, our uh, new residents. And also had a, an experience with Scottish Robbie Burns night. Uh, for those of you who may have been in those kind of nights, you realize it is an experience. Uh, and, but it is celebration of our, of our diversity. Uh, the, uh, after first uh, European contact here in uh, Oak Bay, many of the first settlers were from Scotland and England. Uh, and uh, many of the, uh, uh, the people that uh, were the first Reeves, and you see their pictures up here, were uh, born in, in either England or Scotland. And yes, I did venture to have some haggis. My wife was with me. She was born in Scotland. So uh, thank you. I move on to uh, uh, the, uh, another uh, few remarks, and that is just to recognize our staff uh, for... Uh, a number of, uh, pardon me, they were recently recognized, uh, and I pass on that recognition by some of our residents, uh, and particularly in the, in the height of the, uh, of the snowstorm, or should be storms, I guess. We had a number of them. So, uh, and I know uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Moran, who looks after public works, is, is aware of these. And we got uh, a number of letters, and I'll just have a, mention a couple of them. Uh, from Jim uh, on Pacific Avenue, says, "Well done to the public uh, works for uh, uh, getting the roads clear of snow, and at the same time getting the trash and recycling crew, uh, crews going." Very impressed. Uh, I'm impressed, said Jim. Uh, and um, it was another person who wrote, uh, saying, and it was Peter. Uh, snow removal in the last few days has been an excellent job. Thank you. And the staff at the Municipal ha Hall are wonderful. And he did mention about <coughs> a pothole on Kinross, which I think we're looking at right now. <laughs> Not as we speak, uh, but that's been forwarded. And also got a wonderful letter from uh, a person who was doing a, a, a significant renovation in the uplands and was very appreciative of the work, uh, Mr. Thompson, done by, uh, uh, by your staff, uh, particularly single out Renee and Ed. Uh, and as a, a quote, I think this is a metaphorically, held our hands all the way through the project and guided us uh, where we needed. Uh, it sounded like it was a, uh, a quite a project. And Christine, one of the workers in our in that office, kept us remind kept us reminded of things that uh, we had forgotten. So uh, they were very appreciative. And then uh, finally, I got a um, I guess you can call it a work of art. It's a little bit hard to see here. I got this uh, just at the end of January. Uh, this was a work of art uh, presented by, uh, to me by the uh, Oak Bay Volunteer Society and something that uh, recognized Oak Bay volunteers. And what it is, it's a little hard to see, 
uh, but it's like a crossword puzzle. But in, instead of the crosswords, they have the names of all the volunteers who come forward on a regular basis to help stuff envelopes here with our water bills and our, uh, I guess, our um, tax notices, depending on what it is. They come here regularly, enthusiastically, and they help out. And uh, so their names are all inscribed in this little work of art, which was uh, uh, done by um, uh, a fellow who's uh, one of the volunteers, Bob Carter, who lives literally a, uh, across the other side of the parking lot, uh, who's contributed a lot to our community. And it is, it is, um, it is a way to uh, recognize our volunteers and the need to have volunteers in so many different uh, fields. And, and in this case here with the Oak Bay Volunteer uh, Society. So uh, we thank them, we thank all our volunteers for the uh, work they do on our behalf. And we wouldn't be able to function in the way we do and have the kind of friendly open community without those volunteers uh, helping out. So um, with that, um, I now have to find my agenda. There it is. <laughs> Thank you. So that was uh, item number uh, two. Uh, and item number three is public participation. Now, if you just bear with me, I know some of you may be here to speak to the priorities session, number one, or some of the, um, uh, the, the uh, variance permit items a little later on. I'm going to ask you to wait until we get to that point in the, uh, uh, in, in the agenda, and then we'll deal with, uh, we'll hear from you at that point. But at this point, uh, just if you have something general, unrelated to the priorities, or unrelated to those four uh, permit applications, I'd ask you to come forward and just remind you that uh, you are you will be videoed. Put your name on uh, uh, the list there uh, so we know how to spell it for the minutes and your community. And you will have three minutes uh, to, to speak with us. Are th is there anyone who wishes to come forward uh, under that the regular public participation? Well, most of you will wait. All right, that sounds fine. We'll, we're going to have that public participation period when we actually deal with the items. Okay, and the, and the first item will come up right after uh, the request to uh, sell uh, Girl Guide cookies. So that's item number four we're now on, and uh, that is a request uh, to be permitted to sell Girl Guide cookies uh, on uh, two dates on the avenue. Move approval. Second. Okay. Um, Thank you. Is there any discussion? Typically, this is not a controversial issue. Um, <laughs> girl guides. I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. Now, I want to just have a moment. We're now going to move on to uh, the, um, the priority session. We have a report in the, uh, before us, thank you, uh, regarding uh, uh, what Council's uh, work has been on this priority uh, scheme or proposal. Uh, we've had a number of meetings that have been facilitated by a former uh, 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 acting uh, chief administrative officer. And uh, so what I'm going to do to begin with is just turn it over to our current CAO, Ms. Koning, just to give us a very high level uh, context uh, for uh, our discussions. And then we'll uh, hear from the, uh, the public. Ms. Koning. Yes, Your Worship. I think you actually have highlighted that already. There were two um, sessions that Council had uh, back in November and again in January. Uh, and there was also uh, feedback that Council was looking for from their um, Advisory Planning Commission, which you heard from, I believe, um, at the last Council meeting uh, they came forward. So all of that information was incorporated, and, and part of this draft is uh, <coughs> for Council to consider, but before Council considers that, they wanted to provide an opportunity for feedback from the community. Um, and I think that uh, tonight we probably have a number of people from the community that would like to speak to Council. Um, there are a number of um, items in the analysis, uh, just sort of highlighting some of the, the top priorities that Council put together. You'll see that on page two. Uh, we also divided them up into 
uh, sort of the various areas, uh, parks priorities, building and planning, that kind of thing to help you to sort of um, categorize them. And then there's a number of uh, recommendations or options for council's consideration. Thank you. We have also a number of pieces of correspondence uh, on, on this issue that have been given us in the package. And perhaps we, what we can do is start by formally receiving those, um, uh, those pieces of correspondence. We have a motion we'll receive. to receive, moved. Second, a discussion. All in favor, opposed, none opposed. All right. So, uh, as Ms. Koning said, uh, we now invite comments. Uh, what we're going to do is, much like the uh, regular participation period, uh, we're going to set the timer for three minutes, uh, and uh, I will time it. And when you hear the timer, if you wouldn't mind just finishing whatever sentence you're at, please, uh, and wrapping it up. Um, and we, as you know, we do accept correspondence, so if you have something you want to leave with us or you want to uh, send to us subsequently, uh, we would be pleased to... Uh, um, read that all right so what I'm going to do is when I st I'll start the three minute timer when I say uh, welcome to whoever it is come forward so I, I ask you to come forward state your name put your name in uh, uh, on that list so we know how to spell it the community you're in and uh, then you're uh, away to the races all right uh, the first speaker please Second speaker, please. <laughs> All right. And you're gonna, you, what, you're gonna, you're being videotaped. Mm. That microphone that's in front of you doesn't work. It's really the standing microphone. Is that correct? So that you'll have to be close to that. Otherwise, the people who uh, may be watching at home or who will be watching the archive video uh, can hear you. So pull that a little closer to you. I would think as close as you can, please. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to talk to um, strategic priorities. Yes. Just a point of clarification. Um, if I understand the legislation correctly, um, in setting these, uh, councils required to go out for public review. Am I right on that? Um, not. Uh, I, I think we do it as a matter of policy, not as a matter of legislation. Mm -hmm. okay. it, unless you want to refer us to a. No, no. A piece no, of legislation, no, but no. that certainly hasn't been something no, that we've done before. We do it as a matter of, of good practice. I wasn't disingenuous with my question. No, no, no. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to... Um, okay, so let's start with your name, and then I welcome you, and then I start the time. That'll be the sequence. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, my name is Bill Wilson, and uh, I'm a resident in Oak Bay. Welcome, Mr. <clears throat> Wilson. Thank you. Um, I wanted to um, have a, a question <clears throat> with respect to the the priorities that are listed um, in the document 2017-2018. Is, is that an ordinal ranking or just a listing? There, they've not been ranked. Uh, as one is the top <coughs> and the number two is the second highest. These are ones we wanted to get a, a accomplished over the next two years. Right. So it's just a, it's just a listing then, in other words. There's da and there's dates next to them. As yeah, no, I, I yeah. understand that. Okay. Th thank you. Um, the reason I, I raise that will, will become clear. I, I, I wanted to suggest to Council that um, there really is a need to um, ensure that adequate attention is paid to um, the, the assets and asset renewal. And I was a little concerned where that was stacking up. And the reason I, I, I go to that in particular is um, if you re it, sorry, in my reviewing of, of some documents that are, that are in the public domain, um, it becomes fairly clear that um, if you look, for example, at the, um, pardon me for the glasses, if, if you look at the official community plan, one gets, one gets a little concerned about the shelf life of a lot of our current infrastructure, um, which of course leads to uh, the question about uh, adequate funding for replacement. And um, when you do basic arithmetic in terms of um, the numbers that are, that are in the OCP, some numbers that are in the annual reports released, released under the ambit of council, um, it's quite clear that we're talking the order of magnitude about $150 million to, to bring things back up to snuff. And we're probably looking at, if you use the OCP um, shelf life that are provided in that table on page 143, you're really looking at the next 10 years to get stuff up and renewed. 
which means you're looking at about finding around one and a half million dollars a year to close that gap over the next 10 years, which is about six, maybe 7% of Oak Bay's take from the tax base, not, not the distributions from other levels of government. So it, it's just a bit of an onerous um, task that, that council's confronted with. And uh, Mayor, your, <laughs> I don't have to tell you what's gonna play out with respect to um, sewage treatment, but when you start to look at that, and, and look at Oak Bay's share of that, the numbers that are available to us to date suggest that that's another two and a half million dollars a year that's gonna have to come out of the, uh, the taxpayer base in Oak Bay. So you're looking at, um, that's probably, that's, that's about 10% of the revenues that come in from the tax base. So you throw those two numbers together, we've got to do some pretty aggressive thinking. And you got two things I think that you can get to, if I can just close off with this sentence. Number one, I think it's really important to get our head around what's coming at us, what the orders of magnitude, where it's coming from. Number two, I think we have to very aggressively in Oak Bay start to look at our cost mix. We've got to deal with the costing side of the equation as well. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, you very much for Thank your Thank you very much, Mr. Wilson. And uh, it's certainly, I take your point about uh, the cost of sewage treatment. That will be uh, something that's going to impact all of us. And that'll be coming on over the next number of years slowly, and then there'll be a bit of a step. So, so thanks for, for your uh, submissions on that. And as you can see, as part of our um, strategic directions, one of the actions is to prepare an asset management plan, which really speaks to what uh, you're talking about. So we know how much we got and how much. So thank you. Any other speakers, please come forward. Thank you. Yes, that is a little high, yeah. Esther. I'm, we're Verti sorry about vertically that. Vertically challenged here. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, my name is Esther Patterson. I'm also a resident of Oak Bay from Woodlawn Crescent. And Welcome. Mr. Mayor and Council, um, I, I did send in uh, some written information for you, but just to follow up on that, and that is really clarification that uh, uh, of thinking what I know and knowing what I know about the strategic priorities and that is about the definition of secondary suites on the strategic priorities and I should say the new rolled up document is somewhat easier to understand but then I'm going to backtrack and say but I want more clarification and that is it does say the uh, under the action item of uh, the OCP implementation, it says, to undertake the regulation of secondary suites. And I think there are many people in the, um, in the community that will believe that that is the same as what they have seen in the OCP document, and that is with uh, undertaking regulation of secondary suites in existing houses. And from my understanding of the, uh, the presentation that was at UVic, um, the, the consultant that from Urban Forest, when I asked about why secondary suites <coughs> didn't have a definition, I was then given the explanation, of course, because it's because really how each municipality will decide to zone secondary suites. So secondary suites could include garden cottages, they could include laneway cottages, um, and so what I would like is a clarification on when we talk in the terms of this document exactly what we're talking about, if it is within an existing house or if it could be a separate structure on the property, because very different issues. So one, it, it's, it, secondary suites is a broad term. So that's a question that I have um, for clarification because it, will, it makes a big difference on on the work and the resources. And the other, the second thing that I wanted to talk about with secondary suites is just risk assessment because we've heard many positive reasons for doing it, but there is a new study by Mr. Andy Yan, who is the director of uh, city programs at Simon Fraser University, well respected to professionals in the industry. And he's put out his most uh, recent <coughs> report on the 2016 sec census for um, Metro Vancouver. And really what, he, what, it, what that census would show is that 
even though they're increasing the number of units, they're decreasing the actual occupancy. So you're basically getting a, a, a million dollar ghost town because land has become more of a, a commodity for the wealthy than it has really uh, done anything to add affordable housing or any other housing to it. And I'm starting to see that. I live beside one of these homes now that is sitting vacant. So that's another concern okay. for me. Thank you very much, Ms. Patterson. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, I, I can only speak on my, my own behalf as to your question about secondary suites. Certainly uh, when um, I was working with a committee looking at this some years ago, and I'm just trying to think what the year was. The report was 2010. 20, 2010. Uh, that's where we, the, the focus at that time was uh, in existing buildings with no change to the outside of the building. In fact, we looked at the city of Victoria. They have a condition that, or at least they did then when we looked at some of their bylaws, that you can't have a secondary suite if it causes the building's uh, envelope to change, like a new wing or an addition or something like that. Certainly that was our focus. It was not uh, laneway houses. Uh, I think that's that's perhaps something we would look at down the road is in the infill uh, uh, aspects of it. So uh, that that certainly has been my understanding, and certainly my understanding of the of the building code, uh, talking about the secondary suites being within the house, and there's certain conditions of it on the size. I think maximum, if I can, at that time, I don't know if it's still the building code, Mr. Thomason was 900 and. 80 square feet maximum, and there was a secondary use, or something in that order of magnitude. I might have not have the, the number exactly right. So, okay, thank you very much, Ms. Patterson. Yes. Yes, <coughs> Marion Cumming from Sunny Lane. Welcome. And <coughs> I think it's so appropriate that the, these concerns about priority and affordable housing and secondary suites should be just at the juxtaposition of Valentine's Day and Family Day and the Heritage Week for BC. And uh, I do have a question that concerning secondary suites, is it possible to tailor the legal requirements specified by the province to suit the needs of individual municipalities? And I th I th Mr. Thomason, although this is kind of a question to you, but when we looked at it, is uh, it, the communities can't expand uh, on the building code, but uh, they can, for instance, they may be able to uh, put conditions such as parking on it or other things like that. So those, and, and certainly when we looked at various communities that, that had had secondary suites at that time, they were, they were quite different from one community to another what uh, what was required. So so the answer simply is yes uh, for most of the conditions. So that presumably would cover the uh, flexibility, for example, that I was doing some Googling and discovered an article on Think Twice before making a legal secondary suite application. And a number of the submissions which are all local, say, in the CRD, um, were relating to people who were, who'd been turned down for, say, having a basement ceiling suite, a basement suite with a ceiling that was one inch out, and um, one individual was told the only way, <coughs> excuse me, that he'd get a permit would be to raise the whole house. And <coughs> I would hope that there could be a degree of flexibility so that people who really yearn for a balanced community that, and affordable housing that can that reach some sort of common ground that, so that we that can move ahead with the saving green space and protecting heritage and at the same time welcoming others into our homes. That it's so easy relatively speaking, to, get to subdivide and so difficult, relatively speaking, to conform to legal requirements and welcoming people into our homes. That I might mention that that concept of home share, home care, 
has worked for me for several years now, and I've, my current tenant has been with me for six years. And uh, it, it's just something that contributes to community and older people remaining in their homes. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much, Ms. Cummings. And if I could just address the flexibility, uh, we did look at one community in the CRD uh, that uh, uh, did that very thing. So what they did is they kind of separated existing suites into one category and then any new suites uh, in, in the other category. The new suites had to conform to health and safety inspections, which would include a fire inspection, and also a building inspection, which would include all of um, the building code requirements. They, so that was for any new ones. The old ones, however, were grandparented and only had a visit from the fire to ensure there was health and safety. Uh, so uh, my understanding of, of their policy was even though the uh, ceiling might be a half an inch too low, according to the building, what they were looking at uh, for existing suites was health and safety. Uh, and then they grandparented those and let them continue as long as they every year uh, paid a licensing fee. And of course, they, uh, where they were located is known to the, uh, to the community and to, to, to the fire department uh, in case of any emergency. So they, and that, that's not the only, I think there was others. I think we found one in the Okanagan, I believe. I might have my memory a little wrong a little bit that did something similar. Uh, so. Uh, recognizing that uh, there may be certain strictures of the uh, building code that uh, not everyone could comply with. However, for people that didn't come forward at that time uh, and then were discovered later, uh, they were dealt with as if they were new. People had to voluntarily come forward to be licensed. So it's, uh, I mean, it's not, uh, we all know it's, uh, when we looked at the communities, they all said it wasn't without its hurdles. So. Thank you very much. Anyone else wish to speak to us? All right. Thank you very much. Oh, someone out in the wings there. Someone back there, too. Okay. Thank yep. you. And uh, we need your name. My name is Michael Yagabach. I'm a resident of Oak Bay. I was Welcome. born. Go on. No, I just welcome you so you know that's the time when I push that three-minute button. Thank you. Certainly. I've lived in uh, Victoria all my life. I've uh, worked here all my life. Y if you could just address us, that would be the... That's certainly. Yeah, thank you. Anyways, uh, what's really important to me is that uh, I grew up in Saanich. We moved to Victoria, and then we came to Oak Bay. What really I liked about Oak Bay as our family that moved here is it was a family, single family dwelling area. In Saanich, we lived with a suite. It's the only way we could make ends meet. And it was an illegal suite and it didn't meet all the regulations. The most important thing is that when we moved from there to Fairfield, which was an area that didn't have suites, but the legalized suites, the whole neighborhood changed. We had things happen in the neighborhood. We raised our family and uh, the place next door uh, actually was turned into a duplex, but a triplex actually. The house next door moved from a single family dwelling to a duplex uh, with suites. And the most important th thing that changed was the streets were filled with uh, cars that we couldn't park in front of our own place. We couldn't get people or friends to park there. The other thing that was most notable is where we had a family uh, of people that we knew came and went. All of a sudden, there were strangers around and neighbors that would change uh, every day. The third thing that we never expected to happen was uh, because of the transient community, my truck got stolen, towels got, <laughs> got taken out of the backyard, weird. Uh, we had uh, people in the neighborhood that were, uh, well, we had a flasher, we had somebody that went into somebody's bedroom, all within the three-year period. So 
we decided that this wasn't a family neighborhood anymore. And so we looked for a family neighborhood and we were very lucky 20 odd years ago to come into this fantastic neighborhood. And we're fighting to let you know that number one is a guy that's worked in construction and know how to change suites and knows the regulations, both fire specifically and for building, that I would suggest that unfortunately for yourself, ma'am, as far as fire regulations go, there would be, as in Saanich, only 16 suites that were registered the first year that they switched over in Saanich. They've already gone through this. We went through this seven, seven years ago with this other part of the council and with yourself, as you previously said, I want this community to stay as it is, single family dwelling. We have suites and they work really well because if there's a problem, we have a legal matter. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Mr. Mears, I think, is coming to the front now. Thank you. How come we only have two names here? S sorry, you have two names? <laughs> I thought everything was supposed to sign in. Welcome. Uh, Anthony Mears, uh, South Oak Bay, for the time being. <laughs> I don't know. I, <clears throat> I have a problem with uh, the, the way things are unfolding here. I, I think we, we should have had a sit down with everybody and a round table discussion and figure out how we're going to do this in the first place. Uh, to hear you say that the fire chief's going to go in. You know, he, the fire chief just can't go in based on anything. He's got to go in on, uh, you know, if he's got a, any kind of fire danger. You need a, the building inspector can get in, uh, and, uh, or if there's a complaint, then we have a bylaw officer, and he, he, he's, the, he's the person actually to go in. Um, you know, people don't come forward. We know that. We know that uh, from Victoria, from Vancouver, from uh, View Royal, uh, from Saanich. You legalize and, and no one comes through the door to register. Uh, however, when you open a registration program, it costs money. So the taxpayer is going to have to pay for that. Uh, I think we have to be realistic. Uh, I think we had about 30 people show up here on a uh, sweet situation on Cavendish not that long ago. And uh, it took 18 months to resolve that. So once you legalize, you, you have some problems. Um, Councilor Murdoch talked about how to. I think it would have been nice to sit down with the community and talk about how to way before we may prioritize legalizing suites and how we're going to do that. I think we have to find out how we're going to do that first. I, in my submission, I've listed a whole bunch of things that should have been done ahead of, of these priorities. Uh, the infrastructure, the gentleman's talked about that. Um, you know, you can't, you can't uh, we're going to have to have off street parking. Um, uh, we've got we got the tree canopy that's been put off to the parks board. They, they said they don't have any money uh, to actually implement the recommendations of a ex expensive consultant company that we uh, that we hired. Um, so that's going to be done in the future. Um, so what you're basically saying is let's uh, develop first, uh, let's save trees second, and that's not on. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to belabor this. You've all got it down. I've, I've ex listed all my the things that should have happened. We've had task forces. These have all been put off till the la to, to, to later. Uh, we did uh, demolition task forces and public engagement task forces, and they've been put off to, I guess, the next council because you don't have them on your 217, 218 uh, priorities. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, that's all I'm going to say for now. I think we would, should have had a proper public consultation session. We've had one in uh, 18 months. You've now uh, killed that uh, planning process that uh, you, 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 you passed on June 22nd in 215. Uh, that had all kinds of opportunities for public uh, engagement. You had one at UVic, and uh, <coughs> you had an earful that people didn't want infill, and you uh, totally ignored that. Thank you. And gone to plan B, which is uh, legislation of secondary suites and duplexes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mears. Okay. 
Anybody else, please? Okay. All right. I don't see anybody yeah. else coming yeah. forward. Um, you have been up before. Well, there's so nobody else, so let, let me have a crack. I'm only going to take uh, my three uh, minutes. It doesn't, it doesn't work like let me have a crack, no. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you one minute uh, to reply to anything else that's, whoa. that's raised. Whoa. Okay. Whoa, whoa. Sorry. Okay. When, no, just hang on okay. a second. When, when you set this up, there was no indication to any of us that we only got to speak one time. Well, so where's that That's certainly from? implicit in that. Otherwise... No, 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 no. Okay. There's nothing implicit about that. Okay. It may be implicit in your head, but it's not implicit okay. in my head. Thank you. I'm going to chair the meeting. Uh, and I uh, just want to see what Council uh, Druthers are here in terms of second-time speakers, um, and then third-time speakers, and then fourth-time speakers. Uh, then it really just undermines the point of having a three-minute. I, I mean, it, it really it doesn't. So that I'm just, I'll yeah, call on you yeah. in just a minute, Mr. Wilson. So... Um, Okay, so uh, we we agreed. It just seems to be a consensus that we have a second a second time three minute speak speaking to. Okay, yes, uh, Councillor Zalka, please. Uh, if you would feel more comfortable for us to suspend the rules, I would be fine to move that. How would you feel? Uh, what would you like to? How would you like to proceed? Uh, no, I, I'm asking for council's consensus, and and we could do a motion if we wanted to. But I think there's a consensus that everyone will have an opportunity to speak a second time for three minutes. And then that's it, not a third time, okay? Okay, Mr. I, Wilson. I don't, I don't think this is gonna take um, three minutes, Mr. Chairman, so we'll save you some time. But what I wanted to ask- Welcome <coughs> again. What I wanted to ask was, um, the community plan states 69% of responses for the survey want, and quotes, regulated secondary suites in existing homes. Okay? What's the current regulation? What's what's the byline okay? Pardon me? They're are, not, are, are, not are, permitted. Are, thank they're you very much. So can you, if you look at that statement, I believe you can actually interpret it the other way. What 69% are asking for is for the regulation to be enforced, not rewritten to accommodate secondary suites. I'm not saying that's the answer, sir. What I am saying is you can interpret it. No, please it. don't. Please don't do that. No, no, no. This, We're, is, this is an open discussion. This is good. We, this is what you want to be doing, talking. But you can, but you can flip it the other way. So I ask council, the way this thing is worded, the mandate. Don't base the mandate to go down this path based on what's coming out of that survey. It's not there. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Okay, anybody else wish to speak for the first or second time? All right, seeing no other one coming forward, uh, we'll close off that part of the agenda. And uh, what I'm gonna suggest is we have a long uh, a list. So this is a matrix, it's not that long actually, it's two pages uh, of our priorities. Uh, what I'm gonna suggest is we borrow from a process that has been successful at the Union of British Columbia Municipalities where there was a number of, uh, of items on a list, uh, essentially, which could be individual uh, resolutions, that we uh, move uh, this list, and then if there's any controversial ones, uh, and I know there will be, we take them off and put them on a side, and we can call that the parking lot, which we could then discuss uh, individually. But I know there's also a number of items on here uh, that uh, that are fairly uh, non-controversial. That there's been a, a fair good, a fair degree of consensus on during the the meetings that we've had. Uh, so um, so with that, then I'm going to invite uh, a motion to uh, approve these. Then I'm going to invite once that motion is on the floor a motion to remove, and we'll do that one at a time, ones that we want to, um, uh, to discuss separately, individually. All right, so we're okay with that? Yep. Um, I'd actually rather move division of the question, so we deal with them one at a time. Uh, I think this is probably a little more, I, I think there's more here that there's consensus on, so let's try that, so I'll see if there's a motion. Uh, to to approve it as is, and then we'll take them out. 
it's it just it's doing the same thing just in a different way so I, I think this might be more um, more efficient S uh, to do it to do it this way excuse me chair yep I move division of the question well there is no question at this point so, uh, the so as yeah, as I need to know what your motion the is. motion as being presented by uh, 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 it, it appears to me that what's being recommended is a block of items yes I move that we deal with each item individually. Okay, I don't hear a seconder. Oh, so so I was, is that a motion? I'll second that. I think we can go through them. The, the consensus one's quick okay. and we can All get right. into the things. Okay, so let's have a discussion on that. We're going to deal with them individually uh, per strategic direction, I assume. Right? And so any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Okay, so the first... You're opposed? Okay. One opposed. So the first one is proactively support reasonable community growth. And there are two there. So did you want to subdivide them from there? I, I'm sorry. I have to. I'm, I need a. I, I'm lost. So I thought we were so on. You're the, the one who made the motion that we separate them individually. I, I apologize. I thought we were on the um, report from uh, written by no. Helen Koenig. We're on the CAO. matrix. Uh, that has the six options. Are we dealing with those six options? No, we're dealing, we're dealing with the matrix. I apologize. Okay. Is that what you had in mind when you made your motion? No, I'm just trying to catch up to you. Sorry. All right. By me. <laughs> Councillor Murdoch. Try and move this forward a little bit. I think uh, these have to be dealt with as a group just so we can kind of, because this is really a question of prioritization and so forth. Uh, including some of the, the, the comments here in terms of where their priorities should be in terms of secondary suites or other aspects of it. Um, and I guess I would just, uh, you know, the pieces on here, I, I look at this at, at, at a macro level. Um, I think we need a bit of a mix of, 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 of planning and tactical or uh, priorities. And, and we have all tactical here right now in terms of just achieving a few small things as opposed to looking at some of the planning portions of it. And in fact, if I, I was considering this, the implementation of development cost charges and community amenity contribution policy, and I, I'm not really clear on how we can do that without having a bit more granular um, uh, plan in terms of housing and, and uh, a plan for the community. Uh, for example, how do you, um, I'll use uh, Cook Street Village as an example. They have a, uh, a plan there which, you know, does not super detailed, but essentially says it's one and a half uh, an FSR of one and a half, and if you want to go to to the absolute max of two and a half, then you pay a community contribution of 75% of the increased value. How do you write that into a development cost charges and so forth if there's no guidelines? I mean, how do you say that two and a half is enough or three and a half is enough if we don't actually set the guidelines first? So I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm having a very hard time with all of these without taking the initial impetus and saying, let's develop at least at a very high level what kind of housing where it can go and so forth. I know we've had this discussion already from a, <clears throat> from a perspective of, of housing strategy versus uh, um, the secondary suites, but I really do think we need to include some of the planning portion of this into this portion of it. Um, so I don't have an issue with any of these. I just, I think we have to add the strategy portion first uh, in, in, in combination with the, uh, the community amenities and development cost charges portion of it and then based on that, come back and, and work on the, the specifics of legalizing and going through that, that technical process of, of, of tactically uh, dealing with some of these specifics. So I have, a, I have an issue with this whole section in terms of how it's worded uh, in that I, have, I can't see how we can pr proceed on them without actually having a bit better plan to start with. Okay. We don't have a motion on the floor now to, to take the first step towards any of these. Um, and so... I appreciate what your comments are, but I think we need to have some kind of concrete decision points on these. So uh, what I hear you saying is that under the, uh, and there's, uh, there are seven strategic directions, is that right now you wouldn't be ready to deal with the first one, which is proactively support reasoned community growth. Is that right? Well, it's hard to argue against proactively supporting reasoned <laughs> community growth. Uh, no, I would suggest that if I was going to make a motion, then it would, again, I, have a, I think we don't have the right number of people here to actually make a final decision on this. But again, I would take this back and just uh, 
set this so that we take out the regulation of secondary suites. Um, and I, I, I'll leave it to you, Chair, before I go into this. I mean, is this something you feel comfortable we can make motions operating at five-sevenths of a piece? Because this mm -hmm. was a very close call last time. And, sure. and for us to make a motion to change it now, you know, I'm not sure. Maybe we can do that and come back to it when the full contingent is, okay, is what, here. What in, and I think you make a very good point. And uh, uh, this weekend I learned that Councillor Ney wasn't going to be here. And we certainly heard uh, their views. And it has been the tradition of our council generally to where where it's a it's it's a fairly uh, close vote it's going to be a close vote we have all seven people here particularly on something uh, as critical as as uh, these kind of implementing the community plan so what i could suggest then is that whole strategic uh, direction uh, be deferred until two weeks hence when we all seven of us will be at this table and if that's the case then we'll go on to the next one focus on well managed and well governed and see how many of them the five of us can deal with as we go through all seven of them and then we'll come back on the on the 27th of February to deal with uh, this first strategic direction yes councillor uh, Croft um, in, in some ways I liked your initial suggestion is that we move the whole council strategic priorities as an overall and then we can take out proactively support mm -hmm. recent community growth as as one of the things that we take out. I, I, I like that approach because are we going to focus on well-being managed and well-governed to serve our residents? Are, are there things in there that are at issue? Those are things that, that we've talked about for some time at updating. We're talking about active role in building a safe and livable community. We have dear management strategy. We have four things in there. Are there things in there that need to come out? And, and that, that's why I liked your original thing because we knew that the regulation of secondary suites would come out because not everyone's here and that yep. comes out as a you know I, I in, in a very easy way we can we can do this rather than going through each one are we we're going to prepare an asset management plan the work is underway we're going to upgrade the upland sewer project the water supply redundancy these are things that need to be done in this community and we can easily deal with these as a block and then I agree, take out the things that we need to deal with altogether. Hmm? Well, that would mean, <laughs> that was what I suggested to begin with, and, and but that would mean that, because council decided that they didn't want to do that. They wanted to go in individually. So do we, do we then want to take a higher, you know, bigger cuts at these and uh, do them you know, like focus on well-being and take an active role in building a safe livable. Do you want to put that as a motion to deal with uh, that on the floor? And we'll see how that goes. Or I think we just do it the way we're continuing to do it. That we okay. don't need to go back. We don't need to take a step backwards. So I'll make a motion that we accept the focus on well-being managed and well-governed to serve our residents section. Be approved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. And that, uh, for those of you who don't uh, uh, have that matrix in front of you, although it's online, involves improving communications by web page refreshing, enhancing corporate infrastructure, that's freedom of information, uh, implementing electronic records, and updating corporate purchasing. And then the third one is maximum use, maximize use of technology, and that has to do with internal software uh, upgrades. Discussions on any of those? Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. A uh, question uh, for staff, if I could just get a bit of uh, understanding of the web page refresh. I, it's the first I've heard of it, other than reading about it in, uh, in the newspaper. Please. Your, your Worship, this actually has been on the, uh, the work program for the, the last couple of years. It was in the, the last plan. And uh, the, the, our, our web page now is uh, uh, older than it should be, and uh, it's not providing uh, the, the degree of services that we would like uh, to make available to the community. Um, and uh, so it, the purpose would be to, uh, I guess, reset it. Uh, we would have uh, some assistance uh, in doing that through uh, some uh, consulting and uh, hopefully make it uh, a bit more modern and, I think, user-friendly. A couple of examples, uh, access to documents, uh, it's quite difficult for the public to find them. Um, in fact, it's difficult for the staff at times to find them. So there are uh, upgrades that uh, we need to make that would make us more efficient and I think the website more uh, user-friendly to the public. Thank you. 
did I hear you say it's kind of old? <laughs> and and the, the reason I, I kind of took, yes. I've taken it back, it's like we, we put it in five years ago, but yes. that just shows how fast things are going, right? I think the last one we probably had for 10 years, or, and then there was 20 years before that we had nothing. So uh, the time uh, line is certainly accelerated, but I, I certainly appreciate your, uh, uh, your input, Mr. Jones, of the kind of things we'd like to fix. So, okay. Any other questions or comments? All, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you. Can we go on to the next one, please? Which is uh, take an active role in building a safe, livable community that has uh, a safe, livable. Uh, the word community is, I'd, is I'd, gone. I'd move, all, move all of them. Okay. And that has the subgroups of deer management strategy, which uh, uh, we're waiting uh, for the UWSS, the province, to... Uh, to work out some uh, funding arrangements. The Carnarvon Park Plan is number two, Urban Forest Strategy number three, and the Turkey uh, Head Parking Lot Bylaw Review is number three. Now that's changed from uh, changing, it's, it's a bylaw review, not necessarily in the implementation and change of the infrastructure there. All right, so there's moved and, was there a seconder? I'll second so moved we can second. discuss. Now let's have some discussion or questions. Go ahead, Councillor Zelko. Thank you very much, Chair. A question through you uh, to staff about the urban forest strategy. It says 2017 in this plan. That's excellent. Uh, what does that mean? What would be delivered in 2017? What's being anticipated, please? Uh, Your Worship, I'll, I'll give that a shot. Uh, our uh, Director of Parks and Recreation and Culture is uh, not uh, available uh, this evening. Um, so that uh, is to really look at and provide a plan to actually how we implement uh, the urban forest strategy. So what, what you have so far is a, uh, a document that has been provided to you listing uh, a number of activities and the costs of some of those activities, but not all the costs. So uh, what the plan would be this year would be to do two things. One, uh, implement those things that we are able to uh, easily that perhaps have no cost. So there are things we can do uh, with various bylaws. And the second would be to put forward a, a, a financial plan for council to consider uh, that would look at uh, the strategy overall and uh, provide you some options and suggestions for how you might uh, implement the plan. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, just go ahead, Councillor Murdoch, please. Uh, just two things, and again, I think they're more wording than they are changing anything. Um, that urban forest strategy implementation plan, I, I would feel more comfortable for it, given this is a formal document, for it to say to develop and approve uh, or complete and approve the uh, um, for urban forest strategy. Um, the develop phase implementation plan sort of implies that it's been approved already and we haven't actually got there yet. So we actually have some work to do to kind of get to the approval process before we get to implement. And the, imp the word implement just to me straight uh, says that we've already approved it. So I just would feel more comfortable if we had I, I so see coding wish looking to, to speak. I, I, I read it a little differently than you, but I can see uh, you uh, I see your point. So if we were to were to develop um, and well, complete and complete and, complete and uh, okay, where is, where does the wording change? I was going to I'll leave it to Ms. Coding. She looks like she wants to, to provide some suggestion. And I think that part of this is we were we were drafting this in anticipation that we would be a little further ahead in terms of you're correct. Mm -hmm. Um, that the actual report, the final report, hasn't come before Council for approval. You've seen a number of, uh, of drafts. There was a lot of discussion about that. I think the intent was once that strategy came to Council, there's going to be an implementation plan in there. So I don't think that we can complete that plan mm -hmm. in 2017, so I would be very cautious and careful about using that word, but I think to start working on the phasing in of that, um, of, the, of the implementation plan. Much like the OCP has a number of uh, short, medium, and long-term. You wouldn't because suggest that that's... My, I'll give you my thinking on here is that th this plan that we're, we're going to be looking at likely would be a five to ten year plan. Uh, uh, over, you know, there's some things that we can do early on. And uh, then there's other things we'll phase in. It could be a it could be a five year plan. It could be a three year plan. I don't see us finishing the plan, uh, but actually just creating a plan uh, for council's approval. That's what I see it as. So we actually approve the plan. We we 
Uh, we create, uh, the, you don't like the word develop, but we create a plan, uh, we agree on it, and then uh, it, it'll be okay, left to implement. Just to speed this along, I'm fine. If that's, the, if that's the intent of the wording of develop a plan, then that's, yeah. I'm fine with that. So that's, that's certainly I, that. the way I had understood it. Okay, thank you. And the other one was just, I, I again, feel more c comfortable, uh, the wording of the deer management strategy uh, to just would say work with the province to develop a deer management strategy, including partnership with UWSS, um, just because I think we plan to move ahead there. And right now it's UWSS, but at this point we haven't got approval uh, for their plan or for the funding or for that model. So I just might want to just, uh, might be my comfort level there that we keep that as a priority and can keep you at WSS there, but just specifically say work with the province uh, and, and UWSS as a, as a secondary piece. I think it's a bit clearer to my mind that we, as a, as a council priority, have our priority of deer management and the partnership is going to be the province first and then uh, right now our selected partner is UWSS. The so, council's so have you got that wording down? Um, Your Worship, what, what I've got yeah. is uh, work with the province to implement a deer management strategy, including a partnership with the UWSS. All right. Yeah, I feel more comfortable with that. Okay, so is there a the consensus we add those words? Okay, um, do we need a we need a motion? Uh, you seem to be. So, uh, thank you, uh, Chair. I, I, I don't minds. see a huge change in meaning, but no, whatever. I'm only going to add it if there's consensus, and if there isn't con full consensus, I'm just going to ask for a motion. So, are you sure motion or as sure long consensus? As the pro UWSS and province are both mentioned, sure. There is consensus. All righty, thank you. So uh, we've added those words by agreement. Uh, any other changes? No? Okay, any other comments? Go ahead, Councillor Murdoff. Uh, just a question because um, I want to make sure I'm clear on which is which here. We have this document which see appears to be sort of the more official document that we're going to be referring to. We also have the report, and they're, they're grouped slightly differently, right? So we have, uh, for example, in the parks priority, the urban forest uh, piece first, and then we have... Uh, in order here, whether they're in order of, of priority, it seem to be in order of priority that Centertap and then Carnarvon Park. They're in different sections here, so it's not so clear as to where they're fitting in. And again, I'm not sure where the position would be to kind of prioritize those because personally I would much prefer that we prioritize the Carnarvon Park, and, and, and which is core to our, our services here, and then the Centertap uh, as, as, as funding is available uh, and assuming that we get to a, an agreed upon design and so <coughs> forth. <coughs> Your Worship, uh, so you are correct. In, in this document, th these have no priority. Uh, these are uh, what council, we've heard council say they would uh, consider as priorities. In the report, there is a, a, a little bit of a suggestion on the timing of some of those projects, and, and that's especially as they relate to the Parks, Recreation, and Culture uh, Department and the Building and Planning Department. So for the uh, the parks priorities, the suggestion, and this is staff suggestion, so council could certainly uh, change that. It's suggested um, there, there's a bit of an order, urban forest strategy implementation plan. We, we work on that. Uh, the cenotaph uh, renewal, and that, uh, as you suggested, uh, we're suggesting is subject to receiving senior government grant funding. And then the uh, Carnarvon Park uh, would uh, be... Um, depending on whether we get that cenotaph uh, funding or when we get it, um, that the start of that uh, would be dependent on the, the cenotaph funding. So it may start sooner than the cenotaph if we didn't get the funding. Uh, it may, if we do get funding soon for the cenotaph, then that's where the efforts of the staff, we're suggesting the staff would focus be because there is that opportunity uh, for that grant funding. Okay, I'm assuming I guess that there's a <coughs> plan for the cenotaph that comes forward that we approve and, and so forth. That's correct, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Okay. And council would have to approve that uh, grant application. Yep. Okay, I'm, I'm, I, I guess, you know, I'll just put on the record then here that I, I think that priority is, is backwards. I think we ha should be focusing our energies on developing the Carnarvon Park plan and seeking funding for that first uh, as a priority. Uh, obviously, if grant funding is available for one and not the other, then that would be uh, you may want to take advantage of that, but I, I personally prefer that we focus on the core pieces of that. 
uh, core, core services of the, of the community. And I think that's something as we go along, we can give staff directions on uh, knowing um, yep. uh, there may only be capacity to do one and, 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 and how we sequence them is something uh, will depend obviously on funding and, and, our, and our decisions up here. Councilor Zalko, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, um, that's, um, that's an interesting idea you just espoused. However, uh, I've, I've been searching for the last two years on where that lever actually is, where we can do what you just said. I don't know where that lever is, where we can actually make changes on the fly to the priorities of things other than at a meeting like this. Yeah, it's not quite on the fly. It'll depend on a number of things, but... Uh, like what, please? Your Worship, one, one, one thing that w was, was mentioned is um, there will be um, a, a estimates uh, an opportunity to look at these again because each one of these things, not all of them, but a number of these will come forward with a price tag. It, uh, some, of the, some of the work can be done using uh, existing resources and existing staff, but there will be costs to some of the other. Uh, so, you know, you will have that uh, opportunity and, and it may be uh, that you look at all these and you see all the costs and you might have to think, okay, uh, you, these are all important priorities, but we're going to have to stretch them out over uh, a longer period of time. Okay, thank you. Yes, go ahead, please. But I, I mean, through you, Chair, I, I think what I'm hearing staff say is that if an opportunity came up for a, a grant um, funding for something to do with Carnarvon Park, that we would actually do that prior to the Cenotaph. Is that what I'm hearing staff say? That's exactly it. I think that y you need to, to realize that, that if you have a number of these priorities that fall within, let's say, the parks, recreation, and culture, there's only so many staff that we have there. So, so staff took some time just to look at what, what does that priority setting look like? What could we start? Because we can't do all of the things that council would like us to do in the time frame. So, so there's a little bit of work in terms of saying, let's say that the urban forest strategy, since we are um, pretty much underway with that, but that would be where we would focus our attention. Then in terms of number two, if these are things that council want to have changed, then council needs to direct that. And likely as, as uh, the corporate officer suggested, that happens during the estimates. Because uh, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't disagree with, with Councillor um, Murdoch that um, perhaps the Carnarvon Park priority should be before the Cenotaph priority just because it's been on the books for so long to have something done there and the building there is in disrepair and it needs to have something to move forward I think in that location so I know it's more expensive but yeah, yeah. yeah and and a lot more will become clear at estimates when we look at the numbers <coughs> you know we may get shicker st shicker stock ticker <laughs> sticker shock on one but not another so we may choose on that basis I've only been drinking water <laughs> I'm going to call the question. I see no other hands. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. We go on to the next item, which is develop and maintain, uh, develop, maintain, and protect our infrastructure. That has three items uh, under it. I'll make that so motion. Seconded. And the three items are prepare asset management plan, uplands combined sewer separation, and uh, uh, water supply redundancy. And certainly the middle of those, the two, is, is critical because we'll have has uh, essentially uh, been hopefully very soon been given the approval by uh, the province uh, to proceed with this. So discussions or questions? Uh, let's see if there's questions first of all, and then we're going to have discussions. Questions of staff? Go ahead, uh, Councillor Zelko. Uh, thank you, Chair. Through you for staff. Prepare an asset management plan. Just wanted to confirm, is that that book that we received that we'll be going through shortly related to all of the various buildings, or is it more than that? Please. Actually, it's both of those things. Uh, we had a presentation, I think, if you recall, with um, uh, Urban Systems. Uh, they did an, an initial in terms of, uh, I think it was Urban, no, Opus, sorry, I think it was Opus that came. Uh, so there will be another presentation so that the overall, but a big component of that is also the building uh, asset management study that was, uh, was done. And th that will be presented, I think, to Council yeah, March 20th. Thank you very much. Yes, go ahead, please. I'll follow up. Um, so for asset management, uh, um, uh, it, is this uh, Im implying really just the, so the, uh, the, 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 the buildings uh, the owned by the district, or does this also include the roads and the uh, under uh, surface stuff and pipes and everything? Yeah. Yes, it, it actually involves all of those things. Thank you. 
Any uh, question or the questions? Any comments? Any discussion? Seeing none, call the question. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Next one is recognize the importance of diverse transportation options to building our community. And there's two items, speed limits and Cadborough Bay bike lanes there. Move of those. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Um, discussions? Questions? Okay, call the question. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you. Uh, the next one is we work closely and collaboratively with our regional neighbors. There's two aspects there. Uh, Capital Regional District, particularly working with respect to derelict boats and First Nations continuing our building, our bridge building uh, with uh, them. So moved. Moved. Second. Seconded. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? None opposed. And number seven, recognize and support our unique character and heritage. There's two. There's a cenotaph renewal and then also establish community-led Heritage Conservation Area. Move approval. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Questions? Go ahead, please, Councillor Zalko. Uh, thank you so much, Chair. Through you to uh, staff. Um, the Heritage Conservation Area, the, uh, it's, um, this plan is, is making specific reference to, I guess, the, the first group. I think some members of that group are here today. Um, uh, I just wanted to, to confirm, this will be a generalized type plan that could then possibly be used for other areas, or, or is it going to be just tailored specifically to this one area? I just wanted to have some idea as to, as to the scope of this in terms of, of, of what's being sort of laid out and what's being anticipated. Is it all of Oak Bay or is it just that one little group? Please. So I think initially, I'll, I'll start initially and then I'll have our Director of Building and Planning speak to it. But I think uh, this actually came specifically to Council from uh, this particular area. I think there was a group that has uh, come before Council and made a presentation. So I think the intent was is that if we had a heritage conservation area, it would be specific to this area. I think that through that learning process, because this is very brand new to us, if there's opportunities for us to take those learnings and apply it to other areas, that's obviously what would happen, but that would be at uh, Council's uh, discretion. Thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, go ahead, Councilor Murdoch, please. Um, I, again, just on the wording here, um, it says implement Cenotaph's Uplands Park renewal as recommended by the Cenotaph Task Force. Uh, I think the wording there probably would be D, B, um, complete design options for Cenotaph renewal and implement subject to grant funding. Because we are, it's this essentially says we're going to implement it, but we haven't, again, again uncomfortable yeah, <laughs> signing off on something that says we're going to implement if we haven't got uh, even to the design phase yet. Oh, fair enough. I think if you read it with a, with a report, that's the implication, right? If you read the two documents together talking about the need to apply for and receive up to $100,000. I think that's certainly uh, been the subtext, but um, if, is there any harm in putting those words in there? No because that really is the implication. So there's consensus. We put those that wording in there. The wording, please. Uh, just to complete design options for the Cenotaph renewal and implement subject to grant funding. Okay, I think we've got that. Okay, with that, that was by, that wording change was by consensus and agreement for all of us. Thank you, go ahead. Uh, Councilor Zalko, please. Thank you, Chair. I have another question, if I may. Yes, please. Uh, related to Heritage Conservation Area, again, I just sort of noticed that it, it, it's, it's expected to be done over two years. I was just wondering, um, is there any reason why that couldn't be done within one year? Again, I think it's something we're not uh, sure how long the process is going to take. Um, and I think the other thing is we're, we're trying to do that with the, the, the uh, resources that we have. Certainly we can speed that along if Council wants that to, ha to happen. Um, but I, I think part of it is we're already uh, a quarter into uh, 2017. <coughs> so the likelihood of us um, having that finished and completed in 2017, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not suggesting I know yay or nay, but, uh, but I'm thinking things are moving along. I don't know that we will even finish it in 2017. Okay. And this would uh, also require budgetary approval which is not going to happen until mid to in mid April, uh, and then uh, if we're going to hire a consultant, which that certainly that's the thinking at this point, that might take two to three to four weeks in terms of putting the RFP together. Uh, so we're probably looking at the starting in June, maybe uh, to get something substantive and consultations going, uh, and 
course, and there's the summer, so we won't get back to it till September. But I, I don't see any, you know, I mean, other than there's a lot of work, there's no other reasons to delay the project. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Oh, yes, Councilor Murdoch, please. Yeah, I just on this one, I, I uh, again, on the on the wording of this, uh, I mean, it's fine. It's very, very, very precise in this case. Um, however, I think there was some discussion we had as a group that we would uh, take this opportunity to, to try and uh, develop tools and processes to kind of uh, implement other things that we can do with it, either make sure this is sort of standardized, uh, and that was sort of broad around heritage recognition and protection. So I don't know if that doesn't seem to be, this is so precise in terms of its wording. Um, is there some wording we could maybe look at just to also just as, as available within that process to sort of do some broader policy changes that, that, that sort of facilitate that? I mean, my, my sense is it'll just come out of that project. It is, it's, yeah. and normally, but this is just so, so prescriptive in terms of the actual wording. I, I think that it's implied okay. that, that yeah. when we're going through this process, obviously there's gonna be lessons learned if there's a way to do that generically with an application, because I think that that's what council needs to determine, right? I think part of this came as a result of uh, a group of citizens for a particular area that was looking for that. So that's sort of the example or the application of the process. And, and I, don't, I don't know enough about this and I'm not sure that any of us know enough about this as until we actually go through the process to see if it's something that is just a generic thing that you can apply uh, in other areas of the community. I, I'm, and I would look to our, our planning staff to maybe help a little bit more well, with I that. I think I'm fine with that. I, I just, you know, I would like to make sure that's, that's agreed upon essentially as a group that, that's there and so. Um, Okay, I, I, I feel more comfortable if it was in the wording, but I don't, I don't have wording prepared for that one in terms of things. So if it's, if it's all well understood and implied, then, then we can leave it as that. I, I don't think the wording as here precludes us as council for, you know, applying those learnings. And actually when we put the RFP together, uh, you know, that can be incorporated in there, um, you know, the development of a template or, or whatever at the same time. So I think that's a detail that we get to when, once we approve our uh, funding. All right, no other questions, no other comments. Uh, call the question, all in favor? Opposed, none opposed, thank you very much. Now, we'll go back to number one. Um, this, is, uh, this is obviously a, a one that's, we know there's been some controversy in the, uh, on, on council, people have different views. Um, and I think it best if we have all seven of us share those views. Uh, at a meeting and we're, we'll have that meeting here with all seven of us uh, on the 27th. So I'm gonna suggest that the first item, proactively support reason community growth be deferred to the 27th. I move okay. deferment. Okay, move and second it. Okay, uh, discussion. I was gonna suggest we defer it to the commi committee of the whole, but uh, I guess it's too late for that. Now. Well, it, 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 that could come afterwards, Councillor Zelka. I mean, if, if we need some more discussions, but we are going to be uh, pushed because as we get into March, uh, some of our families go away for March break and uh, you know, getting seven of us around the table, a little difficult, but we can always use video conferencing uh, if need be. Uh, so, but I think uh, to put it to committee of the whole until we decided whether or not we even want to go down this path, I think might be premature. Because, I mean, if we don't go by down this path, we'll go down another, then that's maybe the time for committee of the whole. All right, so call a question, all in favor? Opposed, none opposed, thank you very much. Um, and we got through that, thank you. Appreciate the uh, comments that people uh, made and came here and to the microphone and, uh, and assisted us with their views, so. And you're still uh, certainly uh, welcome to submit anything in writing. And on the 27th, there'll just be a uh, uh, just be a discussion amongst council, subject to any writings that are submitted. Thank you. Uh, we that was number five. Uh, next one is number six: the regional parks loan authorization. Um, just call that up on my iPad here. Excuse me, Mayor. I, I have a question. The, the, uh, th there was another report. Part of the report from the uh, CAO, which has a recommendation that we haven't dealt with in in total, 
Um, okay, so I'm sorry. Yeah. So we'll go back to number five, and which yeah. is the one there? Yeah, number five. So that so there is a recommendation that council invite comments, develop a plan, the council review staff be directed, and the council approve the attachment form B. And I would like to move that recommendation. Okay, and I think we'd already looked at that uh, during one of our meetings. I think there was a consensus that we all agreed to that uh, approach. That one. Pardon me. Sorry, it would be appropriate to have a resolution. Right, that, right, also. it is, yes. Okay, so you make that motion. Seconded. Discussion. All in favor? Oops, sorry. Okay, we'll just hold the calling of the question. Just so um, where we are, so you know where we are now. So we're on the report from our CAO, and it's the recommendation at the end, and we're moving all five points. Is this what the motion is? Just number five. Just number five, that's is correct. That attachment B. One about, about attachment B on page, um, there's no page number. That's right. So the motion is that council approve the protocol for raising new strategic priorities, initiative special projects outside of the core services, which currently do not appear on the strategic plan spreadsheet. Is that the one? Is that the one you moved and seconded, right? Well, I, I actually saw this as five recommendations, but uh, if you tell me there's only one, uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, we've, we've gone through the exercise of this council strategic priorities just now. Direction to staff, we're going to defer one, which is going to take time. Uh, they're going to be preparing budgets based upon the stuff that we have recommended. So it strikes me that there are five points there, and, and I'm actually m moving the recommendation. Uh, All five. Sorry, I misunderstood then. Okay. And let's just take it a moment to uh, have a look at it. Well, strictly speaking, we've already, number three, we've essentially already done that individually with, the, with one exception. So that's, that's redundant, that one, I would say. Uh, because we're going to come back next time and actually deal with uh, the, the number one strategic priority. So that's unnecessary. Yes, we did number one. Yes, and number two is deferred. And that's part of that package. And then, well, it's essentially four. Uh, it, you know, that's my implication with everything, right? So, but you will have to wait until the final before you do that. So, uh, essentially, it really comes down to it's only number five that's left. Next time we meet, number four can be raised again. Okay. So right? then, so then uh, I will change my motion to recommend approve the council approve attachment B. Okay, that's what I thought it was to begin with in any event, so that's good. Okay, that's fine. Uh, it's good that we at least clarified what's meant here. So we have that motion on the floor. We understand the motion, staff. Yes, okay. Discussion, seeing none, call a question. All in favor, opposed, none. Thank you. Now we move on to uh, the Regional Parks Loan Authorization. And uh, we have a report there. And we've been asked to uh, provide uh, by the CRD, who's uh, approved this, uh, that uh, municipal uh, members provide their approval of the borrowing bylaw by providing their consent on behalf of electors in accordance with Section 348 of the Local Government Act. Just walk us through that, uh, staff member. Uh, just um, give us a high-level context, please. Sure. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so, yes, this is a, a request from the CRD who is looking to borrow $6.1 million to uh, complete sections of the ENN trail. Uh, it's called, uh, the area is called the, the Humpback Connector, um, largely, uh, I guess, uh, completing some connections that will allow more uh, complete path from the, the western communities into uh, downtown Victoria. And Your Worship, I, sh I should add the uh, the cost uh, for um, taxpayers is estimated at 
51 cents per hundred thousand dollars of assessed value. Okay. So, any questions? Okay, Councilor Murdoch, please. Uh, I guess my question on this one is: uh, there's a fund uh, of approximately 20 cents per $100,000 of assessed value that goes towards the land acquisition fund for regional trails and parks. Um, that is, uh, so this is a 25% increase on top of what we're paying right now for that. There's an accumulated total there. I'm about, not sure about the total is it isn't, the reports are, are a couple of years behind, but some of the even neighborhood of eight to $10 million is in that fund right now. Uh, I'm just curious why they're not using those funds uh, for this rather than uh, seeking additional funds um, again, within the broader question of why not work within the funds you have as opposed to uh, coming up with new priorities and asking for more funds for them uh, or re reprioritizing things within the existing budget. Um, the total amounts are not large, but the, um, there seems to be a constant increase of uh, in incremental, oh, well, we just decided to do something else. We'll ask for more money. Um, so I'm wondering if there's anybody here who can answer why this isn't using those funds that are, that are sort of, I appreciate they may be for only for acquisition and not for, improvements, uh, which it, this appears to be for. Your Worship, I, I don't have an answer on that. Okay. That's something we could uh, try to uh, to uh, get for council if that was uh, uh, your wish. So we could defer this for two weeks and uh, uh, get a, uh, from their finance department, uh, just getting a rationale for that. I think that would be helpful. Kay. I would like to see that happen. Move deferral then. Move deferral. deferral. Okay. Your Worship, uh, sorry for interrupting. I, I wonder if we might just have a resolution to invite a representative from the CRD to attend uh, a meeting to provide us some information. They, they've volunteered to do that, so that might be... Uh, okay, I think that might be helpful. In, you know, either, uh, either attend or provide a report. Attendance would be work too. All right, so Councillor Croft, you had an, something you wanted to add? Well, I would like to ask the representative. It's not clear to me by the map. They talk about phase three and phase four. I've got a pretty good idea what those are, but I'd like to know exactly what those two areas are because it's very unclear from the, the correspondence and the map because it's not colored uh, to be able to determine okay. what it, two sections we're actually doing on this trail. Thank yep. you. Given that question, I think it probably would be better to have someone here in person. All right, so I have a deferral question, uh, motion uh, to bring it back in two weeks. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed, thank you. Do you need a motion to request someone to come or is that not required? Your Worship, no, we'll, we'll, we'll invite okay. someone. Okay. Uh, number seven, our advisory design panel minutes from their minute, uh, meeting of January 3rd for move received. Uh, to receive, second. move and second it. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? None opposed, thank you. Similarly, the advisory planning commission, there's two sets there, January 3rd and January 11th. Move for receipt of both. Okay. Seconded. And uh, move and second the discussion. Go ahead, Councillor Zelko. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, with respect to the January 11th Advisory Planning Commission uh, minutes, um, I see in the minutes that um, various motions and points of order were made having to do with running the commission or running the meeting as per the Local Government Act. Could I please have s staff or someone help me to understand what happened in that meeting? Because I can't quite figure out from these minutes. It sounded like something strange was going on. I'm not quite sure. I, I, I just need some help understanding what does this mean? For example, the facilitated workshop thing. Um, what happened, please? Your Worship, I, I was at the meeting, so I can uh, try to deal with that. I'm not going to make any uh, suggestions on what the, the committee itself, so these are just my perceptions. Um, there was, uh, so this was a uh, facilitated workshop uh, for the uh, commission where they were looking at uh, various infill uh, strategies. Uh, and there was a discussion at that time um, about the, the role of the staff that were in attendance and whether or not the staff should be participating in the workshop uh, or not, and uh, the, the decision of the, the commission at the time was that staff would kind of set aside, sit aside and uh, not participate in the workshop, so uh, we didn't, and they carried on, and uh, the, the resolutions and the recommendations that were uh, provided to you um, uh, were a result of that uh, commission meeting. 
Um, thank you. That, that helps me understand that portion of the meeting. Uh, and then later on, uh, where the three motions are actually um, uh, provided, um, the first two talk about how council would undertake, for example, the regulation of secondary suites, and council will consider undertaking the development of zoning. But the third motion basically says to undertake the necessary data gathering. And then as presented or as explained in the meeting before council last time, <laughs> the impression I was left with was that the advisory planning commission themselves were gonna take on the third item, which was to do the, essentially I think it's referred to the housing strategy. What, was, that the, was that what was actually moved at the APC that they were going to do that work independent of staff? I wasn't quite, Actually, I'm not clear on that no, one. I can answer that because I was also at the, at the meeting and I don't know that, that those decisions have been made because obviously uh, priorities, w so there was a recommendation that came forward for council's consideration. That's what you're dealing with right now in terms of the, the strategic priorities. How you decide how that work should be done uh, is up to council. It may be that council refers that back to the advisory planning commission, part of their terms of reference, is to assist council in implementation of the OCP. So those, some of those are actual items that are found in the implementation plan of the OCP. If it's council's desire and council's uh, wish, they can refer that back to the APC and the APC would be involved with that. So whether that's going to happen or not, whether there's comments that have been referred to that or not, uh, that may be a bit presumptuous because the first thing that has to happen is council has to decide if those are in fact, the priorities and, and the direction that council wants to go. I appreciate the, the presumptiveness aspect. However, we, with these minutes here, I just wanted to get a clarity on that. I know in two weeks' time, we'll be talking about that the item that we just deferred relating to the outfall of this particular motion. Um, so this motion then doesn't prescribe that the APC is doing it and it doesn't prescribe the staff is doing it. It just says it needs to get done. Is, is that one what basically it says, it kind of sort of says it's important. But again, I think that, that you have used um, uh, a number of, of committees and commissions and that you look for uh, involvement of, the, of um, community members. So I'm not sure that this would be uh, anything less. I think you would, you would probably defer and you would be asking in terms of, that's why I think you went to them to begin with in terms of you were asking them for their recommendations on what are some of the items that council should consider. So it doesn't, it's not prescri prescribed, but it doesn't pre preclude council from considering using them. Thank you very much. Uh, no other questions, no other comments. Uh, and uh, this is just a motion to receive. It's already on the floor. All in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Oh, you're opposed? Okay. Thank you. Um, so we go on to number nine, which is correspondence to be received. Move received. Second. And that still we'll discuss that later on on the agenda, uh, both to do with 393 King George Terrace and also 19 King George Terrace. Moved and seconded to receive. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. New business and verbal reports. Um, I don't have a report from the Capital Regional District at this point. Uh, other verbal reports? We didn't have time last time about the Mayor's Caucus. Do you want to say a few words about that, Councillor uh, Braithwa, just to kind of give everyone a heads um, up? Sure. It's We're coming up soon. Yeah, it's coming up uh, next week. Uh, we have the Mayor's Caucus, so it, we've invited mayors from all over British Columbia to come to Oak Bay, um, to the Oak Bay Beach Hotel from February 22nd to 24th. Um, we'll be... Um, having a session on the 23rd um, with a panel of um, uh, elected officials from <laughs> from the provincial, uh, provincial yeah. elected officials and uh, hope to um, get a good conversation going around the table to um, for the mayors to discuss uh, their priorities for the upcoming election and uh, we look forward to having a, a, a really good uh, turnout and I think it'll be really fun. So, yep. and I think uh, we're we're honored uh, to uh, have uh, Lieutenant Governor attend uh, the banquet. That's quite an honor for uh, us in Oak Bay uh, to have her uh, attend our community. And uh, the Navy has been gracious enough to uh, to provide uh, 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 some tours. 
particularly as you relate to things like uh, emergency preparedness you know, uh, for uh, the, um, the British Columbia. So, so it looks uh, it's all, almost all in readiness. A lot of work that's been done by uh, Councillor Braithwaite and uh, a little less so by myself, but we're, uh, uh, we're, we're in pretty good shape. Um, any other reports or new business? No? Okay, I'm going to go on to the resolutions. And there are four of them to do with development variance permits, and they're all going to follow a similar pattern. Uh, and, and we now have the new system where it hasn't been, it hasn't come to council and been tabled. It's coming right from committee the whole and went out to notice and then has come back here. Uh, so as we develop, uh, as we s start with each one, the first thing uh, we'll do is in all of them is to move in uh, second if the council so wishes uh, the approval. Then I will call upon the uh, the the applicant and or the members of the public to speak uh, to the uh, to the issue and uh, if there's any questions from council that's that time that uh, that'll be uh, uh, that'll be the opportune time to do that so I know in number 11 uh, we've had one of our councillors recuse himself before so that has to do with 383 King George Terrace yes I'll, I'll recuse myself this uh, for potential conflict of interest within 100 feet of the building Thank you, Councillor Murdoch. Move DVP 383 King George Terrace. Second. Moved and seconded. Now I'm going to see is the applicant here. All right. Just hang, uh, hang in there. Is there anyone who wants to speak to this from the community? 383. Okay. Uh, so what I think we'll do is we'll hear from you and then the applicant can respond and then we'll see if there's any questions from council. So I'm going to ask you to come to the microphone, state your name, write it down, please. Well, whoever held their hand up there, it was, it was you, I think. Uh, just state your name and just fill out, uh, write it out on a little piece of paper and then um, tell us what you want about this particular uh, application. Hi, um, I'm pretty naive about this, but I am a neighbor, adjacent neighbor. Okay, could you pull the microphone up and closer to you because uh, people at home won't be able to hear you as well, but that's better. Okay, and, st and stand close to the microphone, please. And and my name, name is Rose Dick. Um, hmm. So I just had prob um, more clarification of the plans. Um, it didn't seem like my garage from is, n is on the plan, and I was just wondering where the variance was going closest to the road as far as green space goes. Okay. So your, your, your garage is not shown on the plan? No. You're not worried that it'll be part of it to, to take it down, but I don't think no, that's going to be part of it. No, I just want to know from their existing okay. garage where the, where the existing garage is, how much okay. closer to the road okay. is they're planning on. Let's uh, see if staff can answer that. If not, we'll ask the applicant to come forward. Okay. First, did you get the question? Mr. Thomason. Uh, clarification, uh, are you to the south or north? I'm 389, so I don't know my, <laughs> my directions. Looking at their house, I'm on the left. <laughs> so looking okay. at their, uh, you're on the downhill side, not the uphill side. On the downhill side. Downhill side, so I'll be on the north. Looking at the house, I'm on the left. So her garage, uh, mm -hmm. looking at the original plan, the site plan uh, of the existing house there, uh, she is 7.6 meters away from the front property line, 25 feet. And the proposal for uh, that is before you is 10.6 meters, so another three meters, uh, 10 feet fur further in. <coughs> Closer to the road. No, farther away from the road. Further away. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I just 
didn't quite understand the door yep. and the person is being assorted. Does because okay. it wasn't there. Yeah. Does that clarifies everything? So Answers you. your question, okay. Um, now, let's see if there's any questions of the applicant or staff on this. Okay, see no hands. Uh, discussion? See no discussion. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, and wish you well with that. Development Variance Permit 2275 Neal. Uh, we'll get uh, Councillor Murdoch back in here, please. We have a report and recommendations. The applicant here. Okay, hi. Anyone wishes to speak to this application from the members of the public? No? Okay. Let's see if there's any questions from the. Uh, well, let's have the motion first. Actually, Move sorry. DVP 2275 Move. Neal Street. Yeah. Second. Moved and seconded. Now, is there any questions for the applicant or staff? Seeing none, uh, any discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Unopposed. Next one is 19 King George Terrace. Uh, and uh, so, if we could get a motion, and then I'll call upon the applicant and the public to see if. Move DVP 19 King George Terrace. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Now, is the applicant here? All right, the applicant here. And does anyone wish to speak to us, address us on this point? Our two of you, okay. And then what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna ask the, uh, um, I'm gonna hear from, from these uh, members of the public, and then I'm going to um, <coughs> let the applicant re respond. And then we'll also see if council has any questions, either of the speakers or the applicant. So, your name please? Uh, my name is Randy Butcher. Hi, Mr. Butcher. Uh, Where do you live in relation to this? Uh, directly across the street, <coughs> so uh, 20 King George. Okay. Um, our perspective is we live right across the street down towards Crescent. Um, back initially when the uh, proposal was being uh, put together by, by Hugh, he came over and we took a look at it and uh, we, t we discussed it. Um, and then, you know, we had some time to think about it. From our perspective, it has no impact on us in terms of views or um, amenity aspects. Um, from my understanding, there's one tree coming down, um, which isn't the main tree. There's a s secondary tree, which is in a great form anyways, uh, and that's gonna be replaced somewhere in the yard, probably, you know, to be determined at some, point, some other point in time. Um, other than that, though, there's, we don't see a problem with it uh, in terms of amenities or structural issues. Yep. Um, from a view perspective. Okay. So there you go. Thank you very much. Let's just see. Uh, any council members have a question? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. You had your hand up too, sir? Yeah, I don't know if that's going to have to go up fairly high. <laughs> uh, okay. My name is Noel Miles. I'm representing my father in law. He lives at 45 King George Terrace. Unfortunately, he's away right now. But And his name? Uh, Mark Burroughs. Okay, so we have a letter from Mr. Burroughs. Yeah, so he said he sent you a letter. So um, it was the uphill neighbor. Yes, okay. yes. So um, we've had quite a few discussions, me, me and himself, about it and how it's probably going to affect him the most, being the neighbor where he, the view that he sees right now will be obstructed the most, being right behind him. And uh, as you can see, there's nine variances in like that they're asking for, and five being fairly significant ones. And... Uh, there's actually a drawing here, but with the first or lot A, which is where they want to move the new house down, there's um, the house is 35 feet tall, I think it is. So it's five feet over the maximum and maximum height right now of the bylaw. And since it's being moved, it essentially should be deemed as a new build or you know a new structure sh should conform with these bylaws, which it's five feet over, which you know when you're looking for a view, five feet is quite drastic when you're below it. And then the new, the property is only 46 feet, 150 feet is the minimum as it is. And then for the lot B, the secondary lot that what is essentially the new lot that wants to be built, there's four, two, four, yeah, four with three being fairly significant variances, being the maximum paved surface being almost 25% more than what is allowed right now and not really sticking with the Oak Bay theme of more green than pavement being bigger properties. And the second one, which probably affects my father-in-law the most is the second story setback, which is only five feet 
in this drawing overlooking his backyard, which is fairly private as of, as of now, but with this we'll show there'll be almost like a mezzanine looking over the backyard, only being five feet away. And the third one is the minimum property width only being 38 feet, which is 25% smaller than any property or any property should be now with the Oak Bay bylaws, which is fairly precedent setting with how many properties are being sold and renovated right now in Oak Bay. And the people in Oak Bay buy because bigger yards, more green than pavement, as I said, and I don't know, I feel with approving these variances, it could open a door to precedent setting for down the road and you guys might have to have more of these coming your way with so many variances. So that's my piece. <laughs> okay, they just don't move, because I know I have a question. Why don't I start with mine? Could you, and I'm, I'm trying to picture this, right? Is, is the house gonna be higher with respect to Mr. Burroughs' house or the same or lower? Do you see what I mean? Uh, for, for where it's going to be yeah. moved from site A to site B, mm -hmm. and when it moves from site to site B, will that is that on a I think site site B is the, the new build, yeah, the proposed new build, and so that would okay. Be so let's let's use different ones. Okay. Right now, the house is located on whatever it is, site X. Okay, yeah, it's going to now be on site Y. Okay, whatever that is, yeah. is site Y higher or lower? In other words, it's going to be it, is the new siting of the old house going to take out more view or just trying to get a kind of understanding of that the new site of the old house will be moving more downhill but since it's such a tall house that it is with the property if you're in the yard at all like that you're looking at a giant structure either way so but vis-a-vis -vis mr burroughs's property this house will be lower than it is now yes yes the house that they're proposing to move will be lower they're moving okay. it down is that not a good thing yeah but then the house that they're proposing to build no no just i'm closer. just want to talk about the old house is that is it not a good thing that it's lower it's gone down a bit i, I feel yeah if that was the only <laughs> if that was the only okay. thing if that was the only thing so then that, the next thing was in terms of the other building which is going to be fairly low by comparison to the, but, the old house but closer to the but property closer property lines so. will that affect the view uh yeah if you're anywhere other than in the living room if you're in the yard at all you know you have a you have a i don't know how tall the house is here but you have that five feet from your property line okay. and with it being you know a tiered backyard you have different platforms to okay. sit on and you're staring at their deck and they'll be staring right at you so, so it's 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 not the viewscape or it's not like you're not losing your view to the ocean or uh, to some other green space. It's just, you'll be able to see this house. Uh, is that, is that what you mean by view of the new house? Well, from the from the property, the property's you know, on a corner almost, on a corner mm -hmm. of a bend. So the house and the green space are kind of side by side, not front and back. So I see. from okay. the side green space, you'll be staring at the new house and that'll be looking right over okay. the green space. Okay, that's helpful done for me. Let's just see if there's anyone else who has a question, please. Any other member of council has a question? All right. Yes, go ahead, please, uh, Councillor Zalka. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I guess that would be a question for, for the proponent. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm well, let's just, let's just see if there are any questions for, for Mr. Burroughs' agent. With respect <laughs> to this, um, um, uh, are you anticipating in, in some of your concerns that there will be someone on the roof of this new house? No, well, they have a, not the roof, but they have, the a, roof. they have a deck on the second story, which is the second story setback. And that's encroaching back to within five feet of the property line where, you know, it's supposed to be 10 feet. Okay. Okay. I see no other questions of you, sir. Thank you very okay, much. You can have a seat. Oh, well, did I, you change I, your mind? Uh, yeah. Because yeah. so yeah. this is, when I got the, the letter, uh, this is the one I kind of went back and forth looking at ortho photos and trying to figure out where it sort of res resided. And it looks like that deck lines up more or less with sort of the front corner of the house it's kind of awkward everything's kind of on that turn as you said um i'm not entirely clear and i went drove by it as well and it's still not entirely clear where the because there's quite a steep elevation change there is that um, a, yeah i'm not sure if you i don't know if it's kind of an elevation drawing here you could did you guys right. get that one yeah, I think. oh okay so okay, it's yeah. um you so know the that deck's actually on the not the street it's on the back side right. of the house correct yeah yeah so 
and it's uh, I've just I'm trying to get what I can't figure out, and, and I don't know if you if you should have had a chance to sort of <laughs> determine this, because obviously you know a, a normal the, the bylaw s establishes that the second story setbacks are ten feet, uh, not five feet, and that's done to mm -hmm. give airspace between houses and yeah. so forth. Um, but I'm not entirely clear in this situation how much additional privacy it would get if it was sort of five yards further away from the sideline on that one little landing area. That's and that's kind of the crux of this to my mind is 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 there enough value to rejig this and 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 take that away? There's going to be windows there and so forth, but is, does that landing actually make such a difference? Uh, it's a fairly private, grassy area that my wife and I hang out. Well, you know, in the summertime, it's beautiful. But then when you're, if they're enjoying on their deck now, they're over top of any tree, kind of privacy staring at you and your was to be private grass area. And now you almost have an audience because I was proposed from Mark. So, through your chair, thank you very much. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you coming forward. The applicant, either to respond to what you've heard here or what's in the letter. Thank you. Excuse me. Yeah, I was prepared to kind of respond to each point of the letter. Is that okay? That would, oh, yes, absolutely. Um, that would be helpful. So we got a copy of this letter on Friday, um, and we started looking at it and saying, hmm, well, this is interesting what they're pointing out. So one of the things that was brought up in the letter by, by Mark Burroughs is that he believes that it will have a negative impact on the character and feel of the neighborhood, as well as restricting ocean views and seriously uh, impairing privacy on property which is on the north side of the subject. Hang on, are you side. having trouble hearing? I can't hear you right now. Oh, oh, sorry, you're right. We all know who it is, so I, it didn't dawn on me. But, uh, well, he identified himself as the applicant, but he's going to give us a name right now. Okay. Russ? I'm, I'm Russ Collins from Zebra Design. Okay, and the you're design. the applicant's agent here? That's right. Okay. Yeah, they're Thank here you. too. The all right. Thank and you me. stand as close as you can to the microphone if you don't mind. <clears throat> what we want to show you here with this diagram is that, as you were asking before, this is the person who wrote the letters property. Sorry, it's hard to do this from, better. from here. This is the location of the existing house before we move it, and this is the roof line after we move it. It's actually four and a half feet lower physically than what it is now. <clears throat> now, technically, the house is still over height, but that's just, that's the house. It's got a steep pitch roof. It has two stories, and that's just the way the house is. Our proposed other house is in here. So it's very low. You can see that the bottom, the basement of that house, if you're standing up, you can look right over top of this, this new house. So the impact is absolutely minimal. There's also, I have a picture, but there's a, <coughs> a retaining wall that runs down the side of the property. And his land actually is higher than the grade of this lot by you know, about between three feet or so, three to four feet. And there's also a row of trees all the way down here. So again, <coughs> minimum impact to that neighbor. Can you say that again? Because you walked away from the microphone. Sorry. I'll get this picture out so I can pass it around. This picture demonstrates the area that we're talking about. These, these trees are all there right on the property line. And there's a, retaining, a stone retaining wall that's holding the trees up approximately, I guess say three and a half feet. So you can just maybe pass that around, have a look at that. So the next point um, that was brought up by this letter is the existing home is quite large, and in my opinion, will look out of place just a minute. I think you're going to the next point. Yeah. Okay. So let's try to capture this point because it looked like a counselor had a yeah, question. Yeah. To you, Mayor, to the proponent. Um, this house that's in the back of this picture with this car is that where the existing house is? Like, what? What is that back there? That's an existing garage that of this of the development. Bus. Yes. Okay. And that's going. And that is going away. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So go on to your next point now. 
Okay, so the next point that was brought up. And what, which one does this correspond to in the letter? We have the letter in front of us? I call it this sort of the, the second point. Um, so B, there are a total of nine variances, that one, or you're in well, the second gonna, set gonna, of letters? I'm going to address that by talking okay. about all these other things. Okay, thank you. So the, um, the existing home is quite large, in my opinion, will look out a place situated on a 46-foot wide lot. The relocated house on lot A is 32 feet tall and will be five feet above the maximum roof height. So again, just want to talk about the fact that the actual building is moving downhill four and a half feet lower than it is now, so it's opening up a better view for that particular neighbor. Um, the next point that's brought up is the ex uh, extended 25-foot lot, lot B, will only be 38 feet wide. This is 25% less than the minimum lot width of 50 feet. So we believe the variance is acceptable because the minimum lot area is exceeded. And since this is an existing and legal lot, widening the lot provides a reasonable building envelope. As well as the allowable, den the allowable density is not going to be exceeded, and neither is the site coverage, floor area ratio, etc. So regarding lot A, the lot frontage variance is for only 0.4 of a meter, and we should note that the area of lot A exceeds the minimum area by 131%. So both lots are exceeding or like really exceeding the minimum lot area, even though they're narrow. J just remind us what the minimum lot area is for that zoning. Um, I forget. <laughs> just a second. It's about 6,000 square feet, I believe. Okay, yeah, 6,000 square right, feet. Yeah. Okay, thank right. you. So the next point that is brought up is the uh, maximum paved surface on lot B is also double the bylaw and <coughs> there will be little green space remaining. So I brought the site plan along to show you that what, what we're doing is we're trying to have both properties access one driveway crossing. To do that, or the reason we're doing that is to save this tree here. The other reason is that if we were to provide two off-street parking stalls, we have other things that affect the existing house. Like we'd have to possibly remove some of the bay windows down this side, because this was the only side that we could get access. And the other th reason that we have extra paving here is we are putting a garage in the front of the, of the new proposed house in order to save a cluster of oak trees back here. Because at one point we're talking about putting a garage at the back, and after talking with the Oak Bay Arborist, um, he asked us to you know please save those trees. So we decided to push all that to the front. So all of that extra paving is really on lot B, leaving lot A with actually quite a bit under the maximum amount of paving allowed. So the reasoning for it is it's not just we're not doing it just because there's good reasons behind what we're trying to do here for that. Councillor uh, Braithwaite has a question. Um, Councillor so Zeltra. Could, could that be um, permeable paving or no? Yeah, it could be. It could be? Yeah. So that might make a little bit of a difference as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Zelka, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, for, um, uh, for the proponent, um, um, since you're moving the house anyway, I'm just curious, uh, looking at that, especially at the topographical map, why wasn't or why haven't you considered moving, the, uh, relocating the house towards the back of the property? so that there's much less um, paving. Because uh, uh, I see you have, a, you have a, a driveway going all the way to the backyard of the new location on, on proposed lot A. Is there any reason why the house couldn't be shifted back and then the garage maybe be towards the front just to have less driveway? Like that? Okay, the question was put to you. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand the question. The, the, the house doesn't have an attached garage, so we have to, we have to design a garage somewhere in the rear yard. We've tried many different locations. We've been in like talking to staff here about those locations and we came up with this as the best one. But always we've had the driveway going straight to the back because we can't get, it's, uh, it's not legal, like we can't under the um, bylaw put the garage in the front yard. That would be another variance. Okay. Uh, question through uh, the chair to staff. Um, uh, do we have the uh, capacity to allow uh, the proponent to put a garage in the front yard of a property like this and shift the, the uh, proposed lot A building towards the back of the property, please? 
In other words, can, can or we have the capacity to grant a variance? Uh, yes, uh, I suppose that there could be that possibility. Um, the contours of the land actually, you know, if they are keeping one driveway, uh, or are you suggesting that they provide a new driveway for the lot A? I'm not sure. Um, but the uh, contour of the land, it, it, it actually slopes down quite a bit at the front there. It's almost up like a hole in the front of the property so it would uh, it would take a lot of fill and uh, possibly some issues with the trees in the front there but there is a possibility that uh, you, you could have a garage in the front uh, I, I guess now moving the house back um, on that property would also then create possible uh, view issues um, more than what they are with the house at the front of the property for the neighbors. <coughs> uh, if I may, uh, Chair? Yep, I, uh, even though the house is technically, uh, where it's moved is technically actually lower. Yes, but if you move it back, it's going to move higher because it actually slopes to the front of the property also. Uh, Russ, maybe you correct me if I'm wrong there, but I believe that it slopes down at the front. Yep, uh, the property so if you move the house back it it will actually uh, be higher than is currently proposed yeah I think that may be true I'd have to really look at this carefully but um, the main thing is it drops off very steeply from King George Terrace onto this property so we have to ramp it gently to the back to keep it safe and <clears throat> If we were to try and put it, we'd have to put the house right at the very back property line, set back, and then try to turn in front and have a, a garage somehow in the front, which I think we'd end up having to build up. And so I don't think it would be attractive. And I think that being that this is a, <clears throat> a character house that we're hoping to you know, basically keep for many years, I think it's nice to have the house looking to the street, not having a garage in front of it. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, please. Uh, well, I very much appreciate um, the work you're trying to do to uh, to save this uh, this this lovely looking home, um, uh, and uh, it already is, is, is attractive. Um, it's the house next door, the new one that I'm one. My opinion wouldn't necessarily agree with you on that one. Um, so, a question have to do then if there is going to be a driveway going between the two houses, if there is. Uh, question for staff: Is there going to be a problem with that cantilevered bay that's remaining um, on the uh, relocated uh, house on lot A that's sticking, uh, almost touching the driveway. Is there going to be a problem with that part of the house? No, there's uh, driveways that go right beside houses uh, all over the municipality, uh, so there shouldn't be any issue there. Okay. Any other questions then, Councillor Zolko? Okay, thank you very much. You gonna, can you go on to your next point that you were saying you were walking through these in point by point thank you yes yeah, so the the next point is regarding the um the variance for the second story setback on lot b so what this is about is that the proposed house conforms to the minimum required 1.5 meter setback on the first level there is a short stretch of upper floor deck 48 feet approximately that doesn't meet the required three meter setback for the second floor. And this is to provide a spot for a barbecue and a landing to access stairs that provide a connection from the main living space, which is on the top floor of this house, to the backyard. We believe it's important that we connect the living room level to the outdoors for a more livable house and to connect it to the backyard at the same time. So this is not meant to be a deck for people to mingle or hang out on, it's meant to be a barbecue and access to the backyard. drawn a little box around this deck that's right here and those are the stairs so all the rest of this is just roof and our, our upper floor does conform to the three meter setback so so really um, th I think the concern was that it was expressed was there might be people sitting there looking into mr. Burroughs's backyard so you're setting you're saying this isn't this is almost a 
you know, storage area or a transit area for people going down. It's not right. like sitting around looking at people uh, in Mr. Burroughs' backyard. It's just not the room. No, it's not, it's not large enough for, for that. I mean, a couple of people could stand up there, but it's meant okay. we, we were hoping to put a barbecue here and then just have access into the back. All right. Hopefully a patio down at grade level. S so, it, and it's only that, how, how, how big is the distance that it Five the non-conforming? So it's not that it's non-conforming the whole length of the building. No, no. Going right. For nine feet. About nine feet. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And and the width of that, by the way, the five feet. Five feet. All right. Okay. Next point, if there's any more. Nope, that's all the points. Okay. That Thank you very much. Is there any questions uh, for Mr. Collins? Yes. Go ahead, please, uh, Council Braithwaite. Um, my only question would be um, when I'm looking at the setback on Mr. Burrow's side, um, it could could the house on lot B be moved closer to the driveway by a few feet, just to give a little bit more distance from the property line? The reason that, that we did it this way is because we felt that this is so low against this property line, especially when this is elevated, and then it, it just climbs right up. I mean, he's, like I said on that drawing that I showed you, the roof of this building is at the height of the floor mm -hmm. of the basement of the house. So it really has no effect on the view from the house itself. The other problem that we're having is w because we had to put the garage here, we have very little space to get an entry. And so we wanted to connect, we wanted to put a room at the front here, and we put a side entry into this building. So we used the driveway, and the, the driveway is also our entry to the side of the house. So we need a little bit of space between the two. Okay, thank you very much. No other questions from Councillors and Mr. Collins? Yes, go ahead, uh, Councillor Zelka, to Mr. Collins, please. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, on the drawings, uh, th towards the bottom of it, where it, t it shows the streetscape, uh, I, I was a bit confused, but I think I figured it out. I, I was, uh, you have created a very boxy home, that's for lot B, but in the streetscape you show a house with a peak roof. Yeah, that, just that, was, that was a mistake. I don't know oh. how that slipped through, but oh, okay. um, we changed that today, that it's supposed to have a flat roof. Okay. And it, the flat roof is at the maximum roof height or the maximum nope. building height? Um, just gonna say yeah, well, hang on a second. The first peak to view the roof height. So the proposed um, um, roof height is 19.6 feet or 5.97 meters. The maximum permitted is 22.64 or 6.9 meters. Okay, so so then the uh, the, the, the image um, as provided on the streetscape, uh, it actually won't be to the top of the max roof height as no. shown. No, that it's just like take that roof off and just go back to the eave height. Flat, all right, thank you. That helps a lot. Um, and my last question, if I may, um, ch uh, Chair, the um, the driveway. Um, I, I heard talk of a permeable, uh, some sort, some sort of a permeable um, um, material. Uh, w uh, was that or was there agreement on that? Or because yeah, uh, uh, th th that's one of my main objections on this in terms of the uh, the water aspect. Um, what's yep, being proposed we could definitely make that a condition for sure. Uh, what what would would you consider uh, permeable pavers? Um, would certainly make me feel um, that he said yes. Thank you. Thank you. I um I just had one question that came up as a result of what you were talking about. You, and that's to do with the amount of the you know we're allowed twenty five percent paving in the front. Uh, I don't suppose you've done a cumulative. <laughs> if you were to put the two front yards together, are you over the twenty five percent? We're we're about at <coughs> the fifty percent of the two. With our paving. Sorry, with if like you put the two front yards together. Yeah, if you took the whole 25 foot setback yes. times 25%, our paving is at about 25% um, of all of it. Oh, okay. Just a little, so a little bit higher, but just okay. a bit. Okay. 
It's just that you've kind of loaded on to one just to the nature of the topography. That's right. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Anyone else wish to address us on this issue? No? Yes, come forward, please. Joan Peggs at 30 King George Terrace. You could just uh, put your name on there. Thank you. Ms. Pegg. I live directly opposite. I actually yesterday, well, I mean, I'm very familiar with the property, but I actually yesterday did go in and have a good view. And as far as losing some privacy in a backyard. Right now, there is, and if you haven't gone to see it, you should go and have a view. There is a very dense row of trees that sit above this um, rock wall, which is this has been described as about three to three and a half feet. Those trees are on Mr. Burroughs' property. So unless he decides to pull those down, or change that, I, c I don't see him seeing the present house that is there right now, so I don't see how he will see the new house that has been proposed to sit, to sit on the new lot. Okay. And will that block any of his view? Well, before the house blocks the view, I see the trees blocking the view. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Pegg. Anyone else wish to address us? No. Okay. Any final questions for staff? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Now we'll have a discussion. There is a motion that's on the table to approve. Uh, any speakers, please? Okay. Seeing no speakers. Uh, I was just going to say that I, I, I appreciate everybody's coming forward on this one. I, I'm much clearer now in terms of uh, what we have in front of us and, and, and some of the, the questions around location of the garage and so forth and whether we can move it over um, were uh, the were ones I had and, and I appreciate everybody asking them and I I feel much more comfortable now after all that discussion, uh, particularly at the height of the building uh, and the purpose and the size of that deck um, for me to, to feel comfortable uh, with, with the proposed here. Uh, I am a little uncomfortable with approving 38 foot uh, wide lots, um, but I also recognize this is a sort of recognize a bit of a existing uh, two lot situation <coughs> and the fact that the the lot proposed is within the the current zoning requirements of RS5 um, gives me some comfort on that so um, I really just want to appreciate both the applicant and the and the homeowner and the neighbors from coming forward and raising all these very good points because it makes these uh, these this contemplation much much simpler so thank you you and I, I can just add to that uh, I it was very helpful that Mr. Burroughs set all these out in, in detailed form because it allowed us to understand what the problem was and it allowed the applicant to deal with them. So, uh, so I, that's, that was very helpful. Okay, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for coming here tonight. And thanks to the neighbors too. Okay, uh, we have the next one, 1984 Crescent Road. Um, Move DVP 1984 Crescent Road. Thank you. Second. Move and second it now. Is the applicant here? Applicant. Okay. <laughs> right. uh, any anyone uh, from the community wish to speak to this issue of Crescent Road? No. Okay. Let's see if there's any questions for either the applicant or our staff. No questions. All right. Uh, let's have a discussion. Anyone wish to uh, lead off or are we ready for the question? Yeah. It looks like we're ready for the question. All in favor? Opposed? Second. None opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Collins. Um, now, we, uh, we go on to 15. And the first one is, uh, I know I've left it rather late, but we got organized and we got so much other stuff going on, and I move uh, that Mayor Jensen <laughs> be allowed to attend the Mayor's Caucus here in Oak Bay. Second, thank you. I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I won't really be staying iffy. overnight. 
<laughs> Maybe I'll go instead of you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to stay overnight, I, but I have, I'm billeting at 1355 Oliver, if my wife will have me. Yes, Councillor Zelko, please. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, just wanted, uh, uh, will, you, will, you, will you be wanting any assistance from councillors for any of the work that's being done there? Just wanted we, to know. It, it's very kind of you to, to ask that question. We have, uh, we have a number of people who volunteered, and, uh, but uh, we will put you on the list uh, for, uh, for someone who might dial. be available. But it's, two, it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, Friday we won't need anyone because the Navy's taking care of us. Okay. Thank you very much. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you. The next one is the all of us attending AVICC, although all may not go. This uh, is permits the resolution. Second. Okay. And this is the AVICC Association of Vancouver Island Coastal Communities annual meeting, which feeds into the larger union British Columbia municipality. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Go ahead, please. Um, uh, I'll speak in favor of the motion, uh, but I do wish to ask um, what's the deadline for? us putting motions forward yeah uh, it is know? it is this month i thought but uh, it, it will it's on the website so okay. go to the ubcm which will uh which will link you to the abicc at the next council meeting they'll yep. put one forward then thank you okay and and there's also late motions that is possible so that'd be great thank you okay um now anyone else all in favor opposed unopposed whoops resolution the next one here this is the policy ch uh, suggested uh, change for the Wall of Fame. Uh, just a, it's actually a procedural kind of structure. Move changes is laid out. Okay. Second. Thank you. Move and second. A discussion. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed? The next one is the appointment to a, uh, uh, a vacancy on the Tourism Committee. Move the appointment of Michelle Lesage to the Tourism Committee. Move and second. Thank you. Discussion, all in favor, opposed, none opposed. And finally, this is a notice of uh, resolution uh, that uh, is put forward by uh, Councillor Murdoch. Uh, and uh, I think we're going to put this at the committee of the whole. Do we know when? It's gone funny. I thought it was just my ears. How's that? Testing, testing. Testing, testing. I can I can hear some of it over here. It's a number I've been or uh, something I've been waiting for for some time. So, no, I'm just. Maybe it's the zone I'm in. <laughs> Maybe it's, oh, mine works. Huh. Where were we now? Oh, yes, this is the, uh, the notice of motion or notice of resolution put forward by Councillor Murdoch, and I believe we're going to be uh, discussing this uh, when. Uh, what committee the whole? Uh, I, I believe, Your Worship, that this item is before Council at this time to have the discussion as to whether or not. Oh, we uh, even want to? Yes, there okay. is certainly a committee of the whole. Uh, coming up on February 20th, Kay. but it would be uh, Council's discretion at this time, I believe, to have this discussion. Okay, so, so it really is just a notice of motion. No. Uh, it was a resolution to, to discuss this. Okay, just a minute. Re resolution to refer to the committee. Though. Let me just get my iPad. Okay, so the motion is that the concept of expanding public opportunities for beach fires be referred to a future committee of the of the whole for further discussion with staff. So if we can have that moved, seconded. I'm not sure how much we, we need to discuss personally, but uh, are people ready for the question? Okay, I'll do this in 30 seconds or less. Uh, 
this was just in 2010, we had a report from the fire chief uh, to, uh, at, at a request, uh, looking at the pros and cons and options for, for beach fires. Uh, at that time, the council and, and the weight of it uh, decided not to move forward with, with uh, approving uh, or reapproving beach fires at that time. So uh, it's just really a, a philosophical question of whether or not we want to do it as a community. It's been five years. Uh, it doesn't require a new report to be written. We have the information from the fire chief. It would just be having him in attendance at the community as a whole. And we could just see based on the information if we see we, if, this, if the mood of council has changed. And if, if not, then we'll just leave it as is. And if yes, then we could consider uh, what those changes would look like. Thank you very much. I ran into the fire chief today, and so he's aware of this uh, resolution. He's aware of the possibility that the council passes it, and uh, I think he's ready to attend, uh, whatever that is, uh, whatever date we pick. So uh, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. So yeah. now I can ask a question about the date. Do we want it this coming one or the March? Uh, um, why don't we leave that to the staff in terms of the how much was on either of the agendas? I believe Councillor Murdoch is away in March. So it could be either February or April. Honest, it's not. Whatever works into the oh. schedule, it's not. So who's away? In I, I'll be away at the March okay. Committee of the Home Meeting. We're so. happy to have it in February. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good. Thank you very much. We go on to item number 20 and uh, 21, which is a... Uh, uh, bylaw for adoption. Uh, adoption of bylaw 4672. Second. Second. It has already been passed three times in a previous meeting. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank Move you very much. Move adjournment. Second. Second. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. It's a different view from over here. From your point of view, Steve, I've moved to the left. I think I've been on every seat before. <laughs> <laughs> 